From a partly sunny Autzen Stadium in Eugene, it is time to start the football season. This afternoon, the Portland State Vikings from Division II take on the University of Oregon Ducks. Head coach for the Oregon Ducks in his 18th campaign is Rich Brooks, and with one more victory, he will pass Len Casanova as the all-time winningest coach in Oregon history. Of course, uh, many of you know already that Rich resigned his duties as athletic director in the first part of August to concentrate solely on football. And he has done that during the fall camp. Let's take a look at the players that will not be in uniform today. First of all, for Oregon, these are some of the wounded players during fall camp. Ricky Whittle, Salila Malapai could have been starters today. They both suffered thumb injuries. Malapai may be back, back next week when the Ducks travel to Hawaii. After all, he is from Oahu. Dan Mead, Kevin Parker, I Running back, Matt Reinhardt, a redshirt freshman tight end, Baldwin and Schmidt expected to be back uh, in the not-too-distant future. Portland State will receive to start this ball game, and so right off the bat, head coach Rich Brooks, you see in the center there with a white shirt and white cap, will get a good look at his true freshman kicker from Arizona, Matt Belden. True freshman from Glendale, Arizona, an All-American last year, has good range, very strong leg. According to Coach Brooks, some days he can make you forget all about Tommy Thompson. And in other days, you wish Tommy had another year of eligibility. <laughs> but he's got great, great promise, and he'll boot this one away to start this afternoon. Take a look at the twin receivers for Portland State. Near side is Larry Austin. And we are just about set and ready to go. Breeze, I, I would guess, 15 to 20 miles an hour from the southwest. Partly cloudy skies, but it's been sunshine here the last hour or so. Just a perfect day to kick off the football season. So Austin and Steve Pappen deep for Portland State, waiting for the officials to get this one underway as a host of balloons hovering about 25 feet over the stadium floor. And a very short kick angled near side. Austin at the 13. Austin is out to the 40-yard line. So good field position for Portland State. 27-yard return for Larry Austin. Offensively for Portland State, they are guided by a junior college transfer, Kyle Adelin, the quarterback, 6'2", 170 junior from San Antonio. Transfer from San Francisco City College and also from the University of Houston. Has not taken a snap in two years. So they are concerned about what he can do to start this game. We have a discussion with the officials right now. Bill Richardson is today's referee, the Pac-10 crew, in charge of this afternoon. Team is refused, first down Portland State. So a penalty on the kickoff against Oregon for illegal procedure. The Vikings decline and take over at the 41. One so here come the Vikings. Offset eye formation, this is Matt James in motion. And off goes to the tailback. And Pappen has six yards out to the 47-yard line where he is knocked down by the strong safety for Oregon, Chad Cota. Let's take a look at the rest of the starters for Portland State. Allen, the quarterback, Pappen is already carried. Joe Spanish, the starting fullback today. James Hunden, a very athletic wide receiver. And up front, the only returning starter, Jesus Moreno at the left tackle position. Second down and four. Allen, short drop, little out pattern, caught, out of bounds. First down inside Oregon territory at the 46-yard line. The receiver on the play for Portland State was James Hunden, and Herman O'Berry knocked him out. So the Vikings started the opening possession from the 41 and have picked up a first down. Defensively, you see the Ducks up front, Bryant Jackson in the middle, Bailey and Slime in the ends, the linebacking core, Asher and Rule inside, outside. 
Jordan and Jensen. Neither has started a game until today. And the secondary experienced and talented with Herman O'Berry back after missing almost all of last year. Pitch to Pappen to the outside looking for a block. Slips a bit on this Omni turf. Is initially hit by Rich Rule after a gain of one. Cleaning up is Troy Bailey and Bryant Jackson, the two interior linemen. So it's a gain of two, second down and eight. Into the ball game for Portland State is Derek Holmes as he replaces Pappen. Holmes, a big, strong runner, number four, 6'1", 230 from Pasadena, California. And he will be the lone back. And well, now it's split backs as they've uh, gone out of that eye. Allen going up stairs, and this ball is caught by Hunden inbounds. That is inside the 30-yard line. Alex Molden on the coverage for Oregon. So Portland State coming right out with that good field position and moving the ball. And that may be one of the only ways to complete a ball in Alex Molden when he is unaware of where it was. As he looked up to find it, the ball had been underthrown, and oftentimes that works to the advantage of the pass receiver. You're going to see that uh, Hunden comes back and finds the football. Molden is still wondering where it is. Nice job of getting his foot down in bounds. Portland State looking fairly uh, crisp this first drive. They brought in an additional wide receiver, Kyle Croston, the former Oregon quarterback and safety. He's the man in motion, number 18. They'll give it to the fullback. That's Holmes, and he gets to the line of scrimmage, falls forward for maybe one or two yards. Mark Sliman and Herman O'Berry at the bottom of the pile for Oregon, along with Reggie Jordan. This is a relatively inexperienced front seven for Oregon, Ken. You look at Mark Sliman has been in the program a while, but not many starts. Troy Bailey played some year uh, last year, but not many starts. Bryant Jackson, uh, not many starts. And the two outside linebackers, as we mentioned, haven't started a game until today. So although they played before, this is a new role for them as starters, and I'm sure they've got some butterflies to work out. Two tight ends for the Vikings. Slant pattern over the middle. It's almost intercepted by Molden. Boy, he read and broke on that one. Sliced in front of his good buddy, Kyle Croston, and almost had the pick. It's an interesting situation uh, uh, between Croston and his friends at Oregon. I'm sure they know a lot about each other. Croston was a quarterback, so he knows those people as defensive backs, and then he was a defensive back for a couple of years. He's got a real two-dimensional uh, awareness of what some of these key Oregon players can do. Third down and nine for the Vikings, the opening possession of the ball game. This drive started at their own 41. James in motion. Allen with protection, dump off pass, and it's overthrown, intended for Joe Spanish. So good pressure by the Ducks up front. Derek Barnes, an outside linebacker on the blitz, and also Troy Bailey, and the Vikings now in a position where they either try the long field goal or punt. Looks like they'll try the field goal. Matt James will be the holder. And in to attempt the field goal, Jeff Crowell. He had a good scrimmage last week. He was 3 for 3 from 30, 2 for 3 over 40. And this is right at the 45-yard area. Mark it at the 35, 45-yard attempt. Good snap. Kick is up, and it does it have enough juice. It hits the bar and goes over. The Vikings are on the board. So Jeff Crowell from 45 yards and one inch gets the Vikings the first points of the ball game. You don't think he's pumped? So the Vikings score 12-34 remaining first quarter. When we come back, it will be Oregon football. Well, the Vikings with the first points this afternoon as Jeff Crowell banged one into the wind from 45 yards out. 3 nothing Vikings. And they were impressive on their opening drive, Ken. They mixed up the pass and the run and kept the Ducks a little bit off balance. Well, if they were intimidated coming in by the Ducks, they certainly didn't show it on the first drive. But, you know, it's a long football game. And one would expect a Division 1A team like Oregon to have uh, an advantage not only perhaps in talent but in depth as well and a little early to tell that depth uh, factor at this point. 
So now Crowell will be kicking into the wind. The twin safeties for Oregon, the running backs, will be Herman O'Berry and a true freshman, Patrick Johnson, a speed burner, ran the fastest 200 in high school last year. But a true freshman. There were only two true freshmen that played a year ago, but with scholarship reductions, lack of depth, and so forth, you will see in college football many more true freshmen playing in their initial campaigns. Crowell's kick, and he's going to go far side, and this one might go out of bounds. It does. And let's see if the Ducks get the ball at the 35 or take another option. Normally, uh, the 35 yard line is pretty good field position. Normal situation is that true. I think at this point, though, Rich would like to get a, a kickoff return under his belt. Let's take a look at the scoring drive for the Vikings. As we mentioned, they started at their own 41 yard line after a short kick. Seven plays, mixed it up with a run in the pass, 31 yards, and the field goal from 45 yards out. The Vikings with 34 junior college transfers on their roster this year. So they've almost completely turned the program over. And that uh, is not the way Tim Walsh wants to build his program. But you talked to him yesterday, Ken. He said he felt this year he had to go that route. That's right. That's one of the realities of the position Portland State is in. Uh, because they are in the national uh, spotlight so much lately, they are an attractive place for uh, athletes at the Division I level who are incurring all sorts of problems, whether they're academic, financial, family problems. This is a place where you can go and become eligible and play some football. Uh, Kyle Croston opted to do that. This was his last season. He didn't see a big future for it at Oregon. He's got a chance to play some football. So I think that's always going to be a part of the Portland State program. And they've done a nice job with that because that really puts a lot of pressure on coaches to, to m in install and maintain some kind of continuity. And it didn't miss a beat when Pokey Allen left. Crowell with a high kick. Johnson will field. No, it's going to be O'Berry that cuts him off. O'Berry. And so push comes to shove, and he ends up at the 35 where the Ducks would have had the ball on the penalty anyway. A 19-yard return for Herman O'Berry. And so for the first time this season, we will see Danny O'Neill, the quarterback for the Ducks. O'Neill, the senior from Newport Beach, California, Mater Day High School in Southern Cal. And O'Neill wants to go out with a big season. The Ducks five and six a year ago felt they should have been better. O'Neill is determined to prove the Ducks will be a better football team this year. They start out in this H formation with a fullback kind of slotted to the left. Dino Filia the first carry, and he is batted right at the 35 and falls forward to the 37-yard line. Jeff Bockert, number 44, outstanding inside linebacker for the Vikings, makes the stop. Let's set the Oregon starters offensively. O'Neill, Filia, the only healthy upper-class tailback the Ducks have. Dwayne Jones has had a great camp, 245 at the fullback position. Corey Murphy, Kristen McLemore, who had 50 receptions a year ago. Josh Wilcox, the sophomore from Junction City. And up front, David Cutrell starts in the middle. The only true starter there is the right tackle, Steve Harden. O'Neill to pass on first down underneath. It goes to Philia. Has great speed and can't get untracked as it's Bockert again making the initial stop. Fill you out of the 41, a gain of three, and the Ducks will need four more for a first down. The Ducks like to use slip screens, uh, delays. They want to get the hands in Philly, uh, ball in Philia's hands because he's got 10-5 speed. Front seven for Portland State. The Vikings feel the strength of their team is defensively. Up front, Royster's twin brother, Mazio Royster, played at USC. And the secondary, returning starters one and all. O'Neill a half roll on third down. Dump over the middle. It's cut by Kristen McLemore short of the midfield stripe, but he has enough for the first down. The ball will be spotted at the 49-yard line. The safety Ted Leach from Willamette High School along with the rover Ken Harrison making the tackle, but not before the first down. Great year for McLemore last year. He and Derek Deadweiler, the first tandem of Oregon receivers to both catch 50 or more passes in a season. And then a tight end caught over almost 30. The situation, Oregon's done a nice job of throwing the ball downfield. This is Marcel Stewart, a transfer. His first carry is a duck, plows forward into Portland State territory, a gain of three. 
Ken, we talked about all last year, and it's been the talk in the spring and the fall. Oregon wants to be a better team at running the football. And last year, the lowest production in Rich Brooks's tenure here at Oregon, less than 1,000 yards net rushing. Well, the, the inability to run the football has really hurt Oregon the past couple of years, particularly down the latter stages of the season. Situation like this, they're almost inclined to go for it, to develop that offensive line and try to wear down potentially a smaller defense. O'Neal looks like he's audibleizing here. Vikings show five-man rush. They give it to the fullback, Dwayne Jones, and he has stood up at the 45-yard line. A gain of three. It'll be third down and four. Getting back to the running game, Todd, at times it's not seemed that Oregon does not have a running attack per se. It's just that they haven't chosen to really feature it. Well, when you have a quarterback like O'Neal and uh, receivers like Deadweiler and McLemore last year and a tight end that was very good, you are prone more to go to your strength. Well, it's hard to argue with the results because in terms of yards and points, everything was great. Yeah, uh, over 4,000 yards of total offense. Third down, O'Neal underneath, Corey Murphy caught. O'Neal and Murphy combined for a first down at the PSU 36-yard line. Corey Murphy, you talk about a guy with incentive today from Benson High School in Portland, Eric Reese. The starting safety from Philomath High School made the tackle. Well, O'Neill has converted the two straight third down conversions. Interesting to see Portland State's been in a fairly uh, conservative zone. Be interesting to see if they try to put some heat on uh, Danny O'Neill and really see how good their corners match up to the outside receiver the Ducks have. No handed off. It's Philly all back in the ballgame. There's Bockert again. This guy is everywhere and justifiably so considered one of the better linebackers not only in division two but maybe on the west coast a young man out of prairie high school in washington signed with the huskies a parade all-american super prep all-american you name it he was on the list 6'4, 240 and he is a good one well in just some circumstances have been different he might have been playing down in los angeles today he is a great looking athlete and a fine football player you're gonna see him around the football all day today O'Neill to pass on second down. He's going to go deep. He's got a man open. It's McLemore. Touchdown, Oregon. O'Neill to McLemore from 33 yards. <laughs> Looked like they split the defense there, Ken. The two deep and uh, McLemore right down the middle of the field. Well, both safeties got caught out of position. You know, McLemore, safeties have got to give him credit. He can run, he can not only run well, but he catches the ball deep very well, whether you have him covered or not. He showed that several times last year. He's one of the, the premier uh, deep threats. He and uh, Stokes at Cal, I'd say, in the league right now. Ryan Perry Smith will hold as Matt Belden looks for his point as an Oregon Duck, and this one is through the pipe. So you can wipe a little sweat off the brow there, Matt. You, you're in the book. <laughs> Tommy who? Man. Tommy who? Yeah, there you go. Well, you see the touchdown, Kristen McLemore, his 12th touchdown in his career. Into the end zone he goes. The Ducks have the lead. Well, Oregon on its first possession gets a touchdown, a very impressive drive, spearheaded by Danny O'Neill, culminated with the pass to Kristen McLemore. Oregon has the lead, so both teams scoring on their first offensive possessions. So Matt Belden. Ready to kick off again. His last kick only went down to about the 15-yard line. He'd like to do a little better than that. He's got a wind at his back. Steve Pappen and Larry Austin deep. This time it's Pappen on the near side. Belden this time with a much better kick as far as distance. Austin fields it four yards deep. He will bring it out. Slips and falls in the Omni turf. And he's down at the 13. So a little different field position for the Vikings on their second possession. Well, that last drive by Oregon, impressive. Eight plays, 65 yards, consumed just over four minutes on the clock. O'Neill was four for four on the drive. He was a 62% passer last year, 54 yards and the touchdown, 33 yards out to McLemore. And Oregon has the lead. 8.23 remaining in the first quarter, 7-3 Oregon. Vikings backed up deep. Allen, he's going to go upstairs, and this one could be picked. Chad Cota, he's got it, and he drops it. A great defensive play 
by Matt James, the wide receiver. Coda had it in his mitts, but his number seven counterpart, Matt James, really put a lick on him. Let's take another look at the touchdown play by Oregon as O'Neill got great protection and they split the defense right down the middle. You watch in the middle, the safeties are going to have a hard time. They're caught too flat. McLemore gets behind them. The corners are nowhere in sight. They were expecting the free safety to make that play. He was unable to be there. McLemore with 10 touchdown receptions a year ago, tying the school record. Second down and 10. Allen, this time looking for the dump pass. We have a penalty flag. The pass is complete at the 20, 21 yard line. But we do have a penalty flag on the play. Derek Holmes, the big strong fullback, made the reception. Paul Jensen made the stop. The Vikings indicate they believe it is against Oregon. And it is a holding call against Oregon. Last year, the Ducks pretty good as they are most years in the penalty department. They were third in the Pac-10, seven penalties a game for an average of 58 yards. Holding against the defense. Committed against an eligible receiver, five yards, 10 yards, automatic first down. Now here's the situation. The Vikings look pretty crisp their first drive. They've just been scored on by a big play. They'd like to come back and re restore some stability to the game. Oregon's defense doesn't want to give them any kind of, you know, this is the difference between a route and a game that's going to go on and be in a close contest. Well, the Vikings have dodged one bullet this afternoon. That was the potential interception by Chad Cota. You know, the Ducks concentrated all spring practice Ken and all fall on takeaways they had a horrible year in the takeaway department they need to improve they were 10th in the pack 10 in turnover margin they were minus 15 in that that's right they were only able to get eight interceptions last year there's one they drop it right in your hands you got to have it first down play Allen on a roll this guy's a very good athlete dump pass it's tipped by O'Berry and almost intercepted by your golfing buddy Jeff Sherman <laughs> Fans will notice on Jeff's left hand there a cast, and I swear I've watched him for three years now at Oregon. I have never seen him without some sort of armament either on his thumb or wrist. See, Herman O'Berry gets a paw in this one and changes the flight of the ball. And actually gives Jeff a shot at uh, intercepting the football. You mentioned him as a golfer. I, I had an opportunity to play with he and his dad uh, after the spring football game this year. He played par golf, you know, and, and I was really kind of surprised. You think of a defensive back as kind of this gnarly guy. He's really a fine athlete. Coaches think so, too. Second and 10. Oregon showing blitz, and here they come. A good call here. Holmes gets into the secondary, and Sherman slows him up momentarily, but Holmes, big, strong at 6'1", 230, and obviously a pretty good dancer as well. It's about eight yards. So that was an excellent call at the line of scrimmage by Allen as Oregon went with the blitz. Well, it's interesting to see. There is a blitz coming here, and Portland State has chosen to run against it. If he gets one more block out there, Jeff does a nice job of wrapping him up, and that's kind of hog time when you use your legs to tackle him, too. Whatever it takes. Yeah, that's, a, that's what they call soccer tackle. <laughs> so third down and two, 7.45 in the first quarter. Oregon leading 7-3. Allen, good protection out in the flat. Steve Pappen, and he is going to be close to the first down. Excellent play by Alex Molden. And we'll just have to wait on the spot. Uh, right now, it looks like he's a little bit shy of the first down. Well, you can see the quick defensive reactions That's by right. Molden. Well, and the entire Oregon secondary on the left side there reacted to the ball very well. Portland State had kind of a little slip screen out there. Wide receiver coming across trying to block or pick the, the man uh, responsible for covering the tight end. Now, as we look at the quarterback there, Allen, uh, m memories of Montana come back to mind and how uh, Dickinson really hurt the Ducks with his scrambling ability. Neil Zambukas, uh, Oregon defensive coach, saw Allen play in junior college and said, hey, this guy can really create some damage when you get him running around. And Nick uh, Aliotti, uh, hearkening back to that Montana game, said one of the key things defensively is we've got to get guys not intent so much on the sack, you know, the personal statistics. We've got to keep Allen inside in there where we can defend them we think uh, we'll be able to better control the situation if that occurs well Allen said junior college records for touchdown passes as the Vikings come up about a foot shy 65 touchdown passes in two years and he broke a lot of the records set by John Charles who then went on to Portland State and 
guided the Vikings to some tremendous years. You think a 65 touchdown pass? I, you know, I know guys that can't do that against air. That is a lot. And I tell you what, you go to Houston as a, a transfer after they've had the likes of Andre Ware and David Klingler, you got to be pretty good. That's right. Crowell's first punt, the wobbler, goes to the far side and bounces out of bounds inside the 40. They'll mark it at the 38-yard line. 30-yard punt, no return by Crowell, who has the Vikings points this afternoon with a 45-yard field goal. Take a look at the great tradition that Portland State has had at the quarterback position. June Jones, not doing too bad right now. Yep. Although maybe not knowing what he did yesterday. You know what's interesting about June Jones? He's now coaching the guy who coached him. He's the head coach. Mouse Davis is his assistant with offensive Atlanta coordinator. That's, That's right. right. And Danny O'Neill, not bad himself. Oregon's had a great tradition at the quarterback position as well. They'll give the ball to Philia. Looking for that seam, and boy, if he gets a seam, he can go. And this time, a little better surge by the offensive line of nearly four yards. Eric Reed on that left side, a junior from Poway, California. Travis Beard, the outside linebacker for Portland State, made the stop from North Salem High School. And then uh, went on to Walla Walla Community College. Second down, let's call it a long five. Corey Murphy split near slot side, and in the slot is Kristen McLemore. They go with a counter play to Fillion. He doesn't get anywhere. He is nailed by Brian Stromberg. Brian Stromberg, one of two Viking defenders that are celebrating birthdays today. Stromberg is 23 today, and Larry Austin, the starting corner, is 22. And they feel that Stromberg may not get all the notoriety of the rest of the defense, but he might be their most consistent player. Well, particularly at the Division II level, they have outstanding defensive players, and particularly up front, where normally you get some cast-off offensive linemen who are short and can't run. Vikings have got some guys who can play some football. Third and five. O'Neill under some pressure, throws the out pattern for McLemore. He catches it inside the 40 and out of bounds at the 37-yard line. The third reception of the day for Kristen McLemore. Kelly Johnson covering for Portland State with another third down conversion. You see, last year, how efficient and accurate Pac-10 quarterbacks were. Rob Johnson had a sensational year, and Dave Barr, who was injured midway through the season, at 68%. And this comes in a, a league that the year before had seven out of the top uh, 15 defensive teams in the country. So those are outstanding players. Philia spin and wiggle to the 30-yard line, a gain of six. Point about uh, O'Neill, he has uh, converted all three third down conversions. That last attempt, Portland State brought some heat. I think Portland State secondary is going to have a difficult time matching up one-on-one -on -one with the outside receiver of the Ducks. See, Philia once again, it's Stromberg making the tackle. 6'4", 271, a senior from Sunset High School in Portland. Transfer from Siskiyou's Junior College. Was a starter last year. Had a couple of sacks and three fumble recoveries. Here comes the counter play. Filia behind the pulling H-back, Malapai, close to the first down. Tackle Making the tackle, Reister Travis Beard and four. Vernon Mitchell. Mitchell, 6'3", 244, a junior from South San Francisco High School. Third Mike Bellotti, the offensive coordinator, was telling us yesterday that Filia actually is in action a year prior than they had anticipated. They had hoped to redshirt him last year because of injury problems. He was pressed into the fray and that he's actually had not a lot of experience or repetitions. And uh, again, uh, he's in there. He's got to make the best of it. They, they think a lot of his breakaway ability. Dwayne Jones now the fullback. Two tight ends. Here's the pitch. It goes to Philly on. He's going to be nailed at the line of scrimmage. But on that third and one, it looked like the Vikings a little over anxious and they might have been off sides. We'll check the indicators. And Stromberg is injured. He's down at the 30. And that's the last thing the Vikings want to do is lose players in this game. And Stromberg, a tough kid, but you can see having some problems with it looks like the shoulder area. Brian Stromberg, 52 tackles last year from a defensive lineman's position. That's pretty good. That's good production. The penalty is against Portland State. It'll be offsides, and so Oregon gets the first down via penalty. You see Stromberg looked like he might have been the guy in the neutral zone. So it'll be first down Oregon, their second offensive possession. 
With 4.36 remaining in the first quarter, Oregon leading 7-3. to three. You see the career passers at O'Neill with another one today. And one more, he would tie Chris Miller. Play action pass, O'Neill scrambling, loses it, picks it up, runs, scrambles, still on his feet. A little ad lib but by Danny O'Neill, who was voted the most difficult quarterback in the Pac-10 to tackle. And he gets about four yards. Rick Anderson finally tripped him up. <laughs> when do they have that vote? That's a preseason. You know, they have a they have a poll for just about everything conceivably imaginable in these uh, preseason magazines. Most difficult Pac-10 quarterback to sack and well, to tackle. The first problem you see, he tries to swim the tackler with the ball in his hand. But there again, it's athletic ability after that as he picks it up and makes a positive play out of a negative one. They'll give it to the running back. This is Kenny Wheaton. And I say running back momentarily for Kenny Wheaton because he came in and played defensive back last year, redshirt freshman, and he was penciled in as one of their top six corners this year. But with the injury to Ricky Whittle and the freshman Kevin Parker, Kenny Wheaton moved this Monday, last week, a week ago, to tailback. Nick Aliotti, the secondary coach, re-emphasized to us yesterday, <laughs> this is a temporary move. He can't wait to get him back on defense, but he knows that the offense is hurting now at that position and can use somebody. Obviously, it's their advantage if they can score points and take pressure off the defense. Third down play, O'Neill has been perfect on third down so far, and he's got another one. Josh Wilcox, the little juggling act, and Josh Wilcox has a first down inside the five to the two his first reception of the year John Gentry the cornerback had to upend him inside the five well his coach Neil Zambukas was telling us yesterday if he has any problem Josh has a tendency to run before securing the football and that happened on the first uh, reception of his career last year against Colorado State you'd be the judge here if he's improved uh, I'm gonna secure it nice job First and goal from the two. This is Kenny Wheaton, and he is met at the two and thrown back. A penalty flag thrown in the middle of the pile. Boy, that Viking defense up front is tough right now. Frank Stammers. Yeah, it looked like 62, but I guess it, it wasn't. But anyway, we have a face mask. Maybe that's why Kenny went down so fast. Face mask against Portland State. Personal foul, 15-yard face mask foul against the defense, half the distance, automatic first Ryan down. Stromberg back in the game, number 92. And this is a situation where the Oregon-Portland State rivalry will intensify because here's the favored team on the goal line, the underdogs on the goal on the goal line as defenders. You've got to say, hey, we're going to run the ball. If we can't run it against you, that's a real insult. So it'll be first and goal again, this time from the one. Ninth play of the drive. Toss it goes to Wheaton, looking for the end zone, and he scores. The converted defensive back gets the first touchdown rushing for the Ducks this year. Did you see O'Neal move Wheaton over to his left? What he told him was, I'm going to flip you the ball, and you just go over there and score. With Kenny in there, there's a lot of sand lot football because they only have a handful of plays for him today. The and Wheaton that's one package. Of the the yeah, Wheaton, the package. Wheaton package, that's right. That was Wheaton left, folks. <laughs> Well, the young man from Arizona gets his first touchdown. He may like being on offense and uh, may lobby for more of that. And on the serious side, that's what's great about having an experienced quarterback who knows the offense well enough that he can help make those kind of corrections. Another young man from Arizona in to attempt the extra point, and Matt Belden is true. So Oregon now has scored on consecutive possessions. 2.39 remaining in the first quarter. It's Oregon over Portland State, 14-3. Oregon now with a 14-3 lead. We are still in the first quarter here at Autzen Stadium, the season opener for both teams. Portland State from Division II and the Ducks from the Pac-10. The third time today, Matt Belden ready to boot it away. This one fielded by Pappen at the five. Got away from the wedge a little bit. And he runs into Isaac Walker and down at the 25-yard line. Good discipline there by the Oregon kickoff defense. Walker stayed in his lane, a 20-yard return. Take a look at the scoring drive for Oregon. Nine plays, 
That time, Ken, they used the pass to set up the run. 62 yards, four and a half minutes. And two Kenny more Wheaton, th the redshirt freshman, getting the score. That's right, and two third down conversions by Dan O'Neill on the pass. Here we got the Wheaton package. Wheaton left, touchdown. Pretty exactly. good blocking by the left side of the Oregon offensive line. Gotta learn to carry that ball on the left arm there instead of the right arm. Now you'd say, Coach, at least I was going the right way. That's right. Kyle Allen remains a quarterback. Fumble, ball is loose. Scramble for the loose pigskin, and Jeremy Asher may have recovered and does for Oregon. Well, now things slipping away from the Vikings here. Let's see who does have it. It's not 44. But one of the Oregon Ducks down on the bottom of that stack might have been Mark Sliman. It's Reggie Jordan that picks it up. Well, Reggie Oregon Jordan, the Oregon outside Oregon linebacker, but I think actually Sliman had cradled the ball in. So well, Oregon with its first turnover of the afternoon and now in great field position at the PSU 20. Well, they've given the Oregon offense uh, scoring position and they're in a four down area. Don't have to worry about punting down here. Looked like the Oregon, or the uh, Portland State quarterback, the running back, was supposed to be on the uh, uh, draw play, and he took off too early, and Allen tried to get it in there late, hit the hip. That's the problem that Portland State is faced with right now is that Holmes has only practiced two days. Allen is fresh to the program as well. The continuity factor is something that the PSU coaches are concerned about. Uh, and they're, I think they're aware that that's a factor in this game. O'Neill to throw on first down. Good protection, pumping up, looking for Josh Wilcox. He's got it in the end zone for a touchdown. He beat the linebacker, Travis Beard. Danny O'Neill right on the money, and Wilcox at 6'4", 240 pounds, hauled it in. Officially a 19-yard touchdown pass and reception. Well, that's what defense can do for you, Ken. It's set up good field position. The Ducks able to strike on the first play. That's right, and fans are wondering, uh, how much are we going to miss Willie Tate? You know, for all, we could have changed numbers there, and that's the same kind of play Willie Tate made fairly commonplace. Wilcox is a great, great athlete. Sambucas was telling us yesterday that he doesn't consider him much of a leaper, but on that play, that was sensational. He played basketball in high school out of Junction City. So Belden. Getting a workout early in Oregon. Putting some distance between themselves and the PSU Vikings. It's 21-3, 2.18 remaining first quarter. Well, as you can see, the uh, Oregon Ducks beginning to dominate this game. Tim Walsh said not what he had in mind today. His defense has not been able to stop Oregon. The Ducks with 149 yards of offense already. Now Belden really letting it hang out. This one, each one of his kickoffs have been deeper and deeper, and the next one will be a souvenir. You get the feeling that he's starting to warm to the occasion. Yeah. We saw Tim Walsh, the highly successful coach there, who uh, at Sonoma did a, a terrific job there and upset Davis which for years has ruled the roost down there I talked to him yesterday and I said coach any chance of your team looking past the Ducks towards <laughs> Angelo State and he says he laughed and he says no but the head coach is <laughs> and I'll tell you what the, the, the way the score is mounting right now I'm sure he's sitting there looking at let's, let's keep it on the ground and get on the bus and get out of here yeah. well you can see the touchdown as a direct result of the fumble recovery at the 19 yard line the second touchdown pass of the day for Danny O'Neill Allen, a little out pattern, incomplete. Sailed on him a little bit, intended Allen's for his wide for receiver, Hunden James Hunden. Hunden, a big play kind of a guy. In uh, junior college, he was the Remember, MVP a of a team that sent nine players to Division I. So you know he has to be pretty good. Well, and one thing that uh, the coaching staff of Portland State might keep in mind right now, there's only two minutes left in this quarter. They don't want to have to punt against the wind if they have to. That would give the Ducks more easy field position. They'd like to get the ball rolling on the ground and eat up some clock and make some yards. Allen now three for eight throwing for 24 yards. Most of that in the first drive when the Vikings got the field goal. This is Holmes tries the right side. Not much there. Making the tackle is Chad Cota getting plenty of help from his mates. Asher over there along with Troy Bailey. One of the differences in the game so far is third down conversion. The Ducks are four for four. Portland State, this is their third attempt. They have yet to convert. Very pivotal, 
play here. I mean, you know, the game is still early. There's lots of time. But uh, you don't want the game to get out of control too early. Well, Oregon's offense has been razor sharp so far. They have been the dominant part of this football game. So Allen faced with third and nine. James split near side. Allen to throw straight back scrambles out of the pocket. DJ Cabrera in pursuit. He is close to being out of bounds and then is belted. He was tippy toe on that sidelines and I think they will mark him out at the 25 yard line and then he took a pop at about the 27 Derek Barnes will get credit for the tackle. Well if this replay had sound you could see that the main hit is going to take take place after the whistle but it's very difficult to see if he's in or out there. As you can see better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> well I'll tell you who's sorry <laughs> is Allen. Well Derek Barnes put a big hit on him. Nick Aliotti had a lot of good things to say about Derek yesterday. Feels like he's a real coming force in the Oregon defense. Yeah, could give him that pass rusher there from the outside linebacker position. So Jeff Crowell in to attempt the punt. His first one went 30 yards into the breeze. This one a wobbler. Herman O'Berry racing to the far sideline. It takes a backwards roll and will end up in Portland State territory at the 48-yard line. So the Ducks once again take over in Portland State territory after a 23-yard punt. Danny O'Neill, the quarterback for the Ducks, is perfect so far. Seven for seven, 107 yards and two touchdowns. Let's take a look at the schedule for the Ducks this year. Interesting, four non-conference games, a total of 12 games because of the trip to Hawaii. It'll be tough to make that one next week, Ken, but we'll do it. Then <laughs> back home with Utah and Iowa. Now we have Tony Graziani in at quarterback with 116 remaining in the first quarter. So didn't take long for Rich Brooks to go to his backup. Graziani, a little swing pass for Filion. Filion looking up field. Saw Travis Beard and decided he wasn't going to get that one. Well, we talked to Mike Velotti, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach yesterday. He said that coming into fall, they, they told Tony, hey, if things look, you know, you, you, you look well, we're going to give you some quality playing time early. Frankly, his performance in fall camp was not as sharp as they'd hoped. And they thought that was kind of a dilemma they had to work with, with the score being as is, O'Neill seven for seven. It gives them some breathing room to, to look at Graziani and get him the quality work that he needs. Graziani, a 6'2 sophomore from Modesto, California. Second down, draw play. He goes to Philia. He breaks into the secondary, his best run of the afternoon. Close to the first down at the Portland State 39-yard line. Jeff Bockert, number 44, along with Neil Fendel, make the tackle for Portland State. Getting back to Graziani, Bellotti told us he felt that for the first time in a long, long time, Oregon had a real quality backup quarterback. And uh, it was just a matter of getting some reps, getting in a game. I, I'm sure that he could not be more pleased right now at this stage than be able to make that substitution. Graziani threw only four passes last year, two of four. One of them, uh, we remember, a big third down conversion at Colorado State. Here's Dwayne Jones. He's hit at the line of scrimmage by Bocker. Slips off of that hit and gets the first down. Dwayne Jones, one of the good surprises for the Oregon coaching staff in the fall. Had to wait for his opportunity behind Juan Shedrick last year. Now he has that opportunity, and he's ready for a good season. At 245, gives the Ducks a big, strong guy from that fullback position. The only knock against Jones has been his tendency to... Uh, lose control of the football at times. Uh, they feel that uh, that's something he's going to have to work work on. So far so good. Now Jones is the lead back and he gets a nice block and <laughs> is upended at the 33 yard line. Boy that is a textbook tackle by Jeff Bockert. He's been on five or six tackles already. Good looking young man from Van uh, from uh, Prairie High School in Washington and that will be the final play of the first quarter as we take another look at that one the Oregon Ducks beginning to take control of this game after the first 15 minutes it's Oregon 21 Todd McKim along with Ken Woody the first play of the second quarter Tony Graziani to throw and he's hitting belted sack and Stromberg gets the first sack Pushes the Ducks back to the 41. Stromberg with two sacks last year, five tackles, four losses. And it looks like the shoulder that he apparently injured earlier is A-OK. -okay. 
Graziani not used to getting sacked. Didn't get sacked all during the spring except for the spring game. He's usually very good on pocket presence, but that time didn't have a chance. Third down. The Ducks perfect on third down so far. And Graziani throws it right-handed, and it's almost intercepted. It hit the back of big Steve Harden, the right tackle. And Graziani showing a little ambidextrous move there. <laughs> and I'm ambivalent about it. Uh, I was watching the left side of the Oregon offensive line the last two plays, and there was a little bit of mix-up, and uh, things didn't look too smooth. For However, you're going to see that the pressure's coming from inside. There's a situation where a sophomore is trying to make something happen. I think uh, down. And there again, the ball hit an ineligible receiver, so it brings a fumble. So uh, I'm sure Mike Velotti would say, hey, look, there's nothing there. Throw it up and above those guys out of bounds so no one can pick it off. His problem was as a left-handed quarterback, he felt that pressure from his left hand. But you're right, uh, that's a dangerous play. But it's a learning experience, and this is exactly what they wanted to do with Graziani, get yes. him in a game situation where he could learn under fire. It's a lot easier to learn when it's 21 to three and you're ahead than if you're behind 21 three. I would imagine though we would see O'Neill on the next series. Wouldn't surprise me at all because you don't want to lose you know, your continuity and focus in the second quarter. Might depend on field position too, Todd. Yeah. So now Matt Belden will punt it away for the first time in his Oregon career. Belden averaged 47.8 yards of punt last year in high school. He's a two-stepper. This one's a wobbler off the side of his foot, so he's learning the hard way too. Bounces it inside the 25, the 22-yard line, we'll call it. So it's a 24-yard punt for Matt Belden. And again, the one good thing is that you get your first punt and you shank it a little bit, but yet you haven't put yourself and your team in a bad situation. The ball is at the 23. Well, looking across the field there, Rich Brooks had some uh, words with him. And, you know, Rich, over the years, has taken a real interest in the kicking game. He was a special teams guru down with the Los Angeles Rams. He, he is the punting coach. And, it, you know, over the years, if you wonder if Rich Brooks can coach or not, check the punters. They have consistently had outstanding punters. Oftentimes, these kids have been made into punters. First down of the Vikings. Allen still the quarterback. Pappen, and he is smashed to the turf by Desmond Bird, number 99, and Chad Cota, the initial force. Desmond Bird, just a pup for Oregon, 6'2", 270, redshirt freshman from Santa Maria, California. And he only turned 19 about three weeks ago. Well, in his pursuit there, he looked like a linebacker. You know, that's a hungry pup down there. Ducks really had a, a force with Romeo Bandison when he was healthy inside. It'll be interesting to see how the Ducks are able to handle the interior of their nose guard position. They feel that's an area that really needs to be solidified. Help that outside pass rush up. Of course, Salila Malapai, the original starting nose, not playing today because of a thumb injury. Pass caught by Holmes out in the flat, and he's close to the 30-yard line where he is wrestled down by Reggie Jordan, Alex Molden. So it'll be third down for the Vikings and three. Your evaluation of Allen so far this afternoon from the quarterback position, having not played for a couple of years. Well, not having played for a couple of years, pretty good, but that's, uh, you know, I think his, his delivery looks a little bit slow to me he's got great quick feet you can see that he can run the football but I he doesn't strike me as a uh, uh, you know a guy who gets a ball off as quickly as a Stenstrom or one of those kinds of people tight end Bob gets him line to the near side wide receivers James in the slot this looks like it might have been a quarterback draw and Desmond Bird making another big play gets his first career sack whoa we may have found somebody here So that is a sack and a loss and fourth down for the Vikings. And Herman O'Berry, who has not had a chance to return a punt this afternoon, may have an opportunity here. That looked like quarterback draw to me, Ken. I mean, he just didn't really look downfield much. Well, and either that or he saw that big green wave coming <laughs> too fast. <laughs> There's not a future in finding a receiver. Crowell's punt end over end. O'Berry fields. Slips momentarily. Good position defense by Portland State. Outstanding discipline there by the Vikings in making the tackle as number 94, Mike Stewart. 
So Oregon takes over. We'll see who comes in at quarterback. 39 yard punt, three yard return. And it's going to be Tony Graziani. Mike Stewart did a nice job of punt coverage there. There were three players inside, no one outside. The Ducks had a great picket line down the uh, sideline there to the Oregon side. Next time the Ducks field a punt, let's look for that side return. 11.53 remaining second quarter. Oregon leading Portland State 21-3. The Ducks scored on three consecutive possessions in the first quarter. This is Graziani's second offensive possession. Tailback remains Filia. He tries to bounce it outside and no way. Jason Hefley, this guy is a fired up football player. Aggressive, tough, emotional. They really like him as a leader. Well, and the Ducks had something inside. Pulu Malapai, I, I think that the uh, Gary Campbell, the running back coach, would have hoped Filia had stayed inside his block. He ended up bouncing it outside and there was nothing there. Blake Spence in as a tight end right now. Dameron Ricketts at wide receiver. Seeing a little bit of shuffling up front for Oregon as well. Tasi Malapai in at right guard. Viking showing blitz. Now Wilcox. He wants to go in motion awful bad, doesn't he? But they stay there. He gets a good block. Filia bounces through a crease over the 40 to the 42 yard line. Gain of eight. Let's take you down into the trenches. Brian Stromberg, number 92 in there against Steve Harden. And one of the things that Portland State felt is they've got some good nose people inside. The Duck offensive line coach, Steve Greatwood, told us, if we can handle their nose, we feel good about the running game. That play, results speak for themselves. 39-year-old Tim Walsh, 8-3 last year with the Vikings, got them to the first round of the playoffs. That 8-3 mark, based on his one year of tenure, is the best winning percentage for a coach in Portland State history. Graziani facing some heat over the middle caught by Wilcox that should have been an interference call he was hit before he caught the ball and then dropped it but pretty good coverage over there Brockert Matt Bockert made the stop made the hit there's a bang bang call and the Ducks will have to punt it away and the Viking fans get an opportunity to cheer their defense. So Belden to boot it away, this time into a bit of a breeze. Josh, the son of Dave Wilcox, one of the outstanding outside linebackers to ever play the football NFL. Till Lawrence Taylor got there. Here comes the rush, Belden low and over ender. Fielded, this is Hunden to the outside. And we have a penalty flag, he's down at the 32 yard line. Dante Lewis and Jeremy Asher. You will see more of Oregon's first line people on special teams this year than in years past. That due to the greater emphasis that Coach Brooks is placing on the special teams. I think one of the other reasons you see it is because they have such great depth in their secondary. They have a lot of good experienced corners and safeties and those are just the kind of people you like on Illegal block in the back teams. by the return team. 10 yards, first down. Penalty against the Vikings for Illegal block in the back. March it off 10 yards. So they'll put the ball down at the 21-yard line. Let's take a look at the Portland State schedule. This is a real interesting schedule. They're an independent at Division II. They discontinued affiliation with the conference two years ago. Angelo State, that is a huge game for Portland State. Then you go on down the line, you see that big game on September 24th against the team that thrashed the Vikings in the playoffs last year Texas A&M Kingsville quite a rivalry they have with those guys yep I bet they have close to 20,000 uh, at Civic Stadium in Portland for that one Pappen trying to get to the outside in a foot race with Chad Coda sealing him off is Alex Molden but a good run by Pappen bouncing to the outside gain of five Vikings have not been able to consistently rush the football today well, they've not had a first down since the first uh, drive of the game. And uh, the situation here, the Ducks have been stopped on two straight occasions. Their defensive uh, unit for Portland State beginning to get fired up. Now, if the offensive unit can make some yards, you know, kind of at least put the Ducks in bad field position, the pressure now uh, is, will shift to Oregon. Allen on a roll. 
Barnes in pursuit. Here comes Molden. Puts a big time lick on Allen, who delivers on the money to James Hunden for a first down at the 38 yard line. Well, you called that right. That was a big time hit. And Allen, the only way he knew that ball was complete is to hear the crowd uh, reaction because he was going. Uh, he was in the prone position when that ball was caught. Well, we call that a pancake uh, if you're an offensive blocker and you knock somebody on their can. That's a waffle. He was waffled. <laughs> so the first first down for the Vikings since their first drive in the opening quarter. A little confusion as to the set right here by Portland State. This is Kyle Croston in motion. They'll give it to the tailback. This is half and bounce to the outside, and Herman O'Berry will have nothing to do with that. Loss of four. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of guys from Portland State talking to each other. It looked like there was a blocking uh, snafu. And as it was mentioned to us early on, there are a lot of these Portland State players uh, uh, have been were eligible late. Uh, there, there's guys who weren't here for spring football. They're counting on a great deal. You know, quite frankly, uh, Tim Walsh would like to get a lot of repetitions for his good players, get out of it healthy, and use this as a real springboard of getting this team to come back together cohesively. Derek Holmes is the lone back. We have a whistle and the 25 second clock has expired. So that will be delay of game Portland State. For an opening game there really haven't been that many penalties. A lot of times you see those opening games with a host of procedure penalties and uh, illegal blocks. We haven't had a whole lot of that this afternoon. We've certainly not had a host of them. No. So now march it back five yards. It's second and 18 for the Vikings. Oregon will come in with extra defensive backs. It's Lamont Woods comes into the ball game. And bring in an extra down lineman. Here comes the six man blitz. Dump over the middle. Caught by Hawley. And immediately wrapped up by Alex Molden. Kyle Hawley, a sophomore from Dallas, Oregon. Had six receptions last year. And Alex Molden all over him. Alex Molden, two years ago in the Independence Bowl, suffered a severe knee injury. Nine months later, he was back in an Oregon uniform. And when Herman O'Berry went down in the Colorado State game, Alex Molden was forced to play earlier than he was ready to play. And he would admit that. And struggled last year, unable to play at the high level he had as a freshman. But he is back at 100% plus and looks as good as uh, any defensive back the Ducks have had for a long time. Well, great reaction on that last play. The rollout by Allen. This one is up for grabs. And who's going to get it? Nobody. So Allen incomplete. Good rush by Mark Schmidt. Number 54 applying the pressure along with Rich Rule. And the Vikings forced to boot it away. Seven thirty-eight remaining in the second quarter. Oregon leading Portland State 21-3. An explosive first quarter. All the points scored in that opening 15 minutes. The Vikings scored first on a 45-yard field goal on their opening drive. And then Oregon countered with three straight touchdowns. Crowell with a very good boot this time as O'Berry has to turn, and that's always dangerous. Catching it going the wrong way is dangerous. And now he's down at the 10. The ball comes loose. No indication. The Vikings think they have the ball. Question is, was O'Berry down? Well, it's risky to pick up a ball in a bounce like that with your back to the coverage team. But there again, had, he, had O'Berry been able to break the initial uh, tackler there, they had the sideline uh, return. Mike Stewart making the top for uh, stop for Portland State. Let's see if O'Berry was down when the ball came loose. He got a good bounce if he wants to receive it, but that's dangerous. You're running the wrong way. Looks like uh, the ball was down, and uh, the Ducks maintained possession. First play from scrimmage. O'Neal back in at quarterback with a first team offense, and we have a penalty. Well, and the referees are pointing at an Oregon offensive lineman. Holding, Holding. offense. After this 
Repeat first down. So imagine the Vikings would take this penalty here and move the Ducks back inside the 10. And, and this is just what you don't want as the Oregon offensive coach. I mean, you had your uh, early explosion. Things have been kind of going back and forth. You get your first unit guy in there now. In the first play, you get a holding penalty, and you're down around your 10-yard line. And Agraziani is back in. Well, now they're really putting Graziani in a, in a position where he has to be careful, but yet make plays as well. Uh, and he has most of the first unit uh, offense in there with him. You know, sometimes that works to a quarterback's disadvantage. You put a second team quarterback in there with the second team line, and there's, you know, twice as many things to worry about. Quick pattern, Corey Murphy breaks away from the initial containment. He's out close to the 20-yard line. Or he is bumped out of bounds by Bockert again along with Travis Beer. Those two guys very busy this afternoon for the Viking defense. Well, and that, that pass completion there did a lot for Tony Graziani, did a lot for Mike Bellotti. It's going to do a lot for Danny O'Neill. He's sitting there saying, hey, here's a guy. They've got confidence throwing in off the goal line. Uh, he's doing a pretty good job. It's going to main, maintain some uh, the competitive juices with O'Neill. I think for the first time in a long time, he's going to have to play sharp to stay in there all season long. Give it to Fillion. He is not going to get the first down. In fact, may have uh, lost a half a yard on the play. Vikings are pretty good up front with the Stromberg, Royster, Acaba Delaney. They really like at the nose. He's a preseason All-American candidate. They're playing today without Tony Bates, a senior from Iowa, transferred from Iowa, had a tragedy in his family a week or so ago. And had to fly back to Florida to tend to family matters and hasn't been able to really get in full swing. Graziani on third down to Corey Murphy, and he gets inside John Gentry and picks up the first down, a gain of five yards. So Graziani, a couple of hitch patterns to Corey Murphy to pick up the first down after the penalty. And as you see Murphy there, the Ducks have got great receivers for the quick passing game. A quick high percentage pass, you're putting it in the hands of somebody who can not only catch it, but after the catch, juke somebody, you break a tackle, they can go all the way. See the Ducks, 75% on third down attempts. They give it to Phil Yacht, trying to bounce to the outside, does momentarily, but closing quickly from the safety position is Eric Reese from Philomath High School. And that keeps Phil Yaw to only a three-yard gain. Last year, the Oregon uh, pass offense averaged over 14 yards of completion, and that's a big, big statistic. Says a couple things. One, they got guys who can do something with it after the catch. Second of all, they're very successful in throwing the ball downfield, putting pressure on secondaries. See Phil Yaw there. You'd like to have seen him put the ball in his outside hand away from those rushers. Graziani to throw. Pretty good protection. The out pattern is underthrown, intended for Murphy, Reese, and Gentry covering for Portland State. So it'll be third down and six for Tony Graziani and the Ducks. The Ducks are six for eight right now in third down conversions. About twice the third down conversion rate they had last season, which for as successful as the pass offense was, it was kind of on the low side. Marcel Stewart checks in in replace of Dino Filiot tailback. So the Ducks will go with the normal set, although they'll split the two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Slant pattern, underthrown, and I'm not sure if that was thrown for Murphy or McLemore, and Graziani continues to struggle. Has uh, not been sharp this fall after a very good spring, and so Oregon is forced to punt it away. So now this game is kind of turned into a lull where neither offense has been able to generate much. Well, on the positive side there, the Ducks came back from a holding penalty and got a first down. That was uh, a nice little accomplishment. But right now, the game is kind of stabilized, and Ducks will be punting against the wind. The kicking game has not been real sharp for either team so far. James Hunden, the single receiver for Portland State, is zone 32. Here's Belden. Comes the heap, it is a two-stepper, he gets it off. A wobbler, Hunden calls for, makes the fair catch of the 44. So Belden has not been able to get one to turn over this afternoon. He's got a strong leg, but it'll take some time. Only a 28-yard punt, 
And when we come back, the Vikings will have the football. Vikings football, five and a half to play in the second quarter. Allen throws the out pattern, caught by Hunden in front of Herman O'Berry, a gain of almost eight. You asked me what I thought of Allen on that play there. He stepped back and really threw the ball with some authority to the wide side of the field. By far one of the most direct and uh, I guess I would call it a confident pass. He threw that ball with some uh, mustard on it. Timing pattern with Hunden, big receiver at six foot three. Averaged almost 29 yards of reception. That's, that's incredible. That is unbelievable. Number one mark It's almost the junior colleges. It's almost as good as your mark back in Pennsylvania in high school, Todd. That was punning. <laughs> Short yardage situation, but the Vikings may have taken a little bit too much time. You see some experience there. Kyle Croston called timeout as a wide receiver. Charge timeout against the offense. I think he saw that they were in a uh, the wrong formation improper. Didn't look like they had enough people on the line of scrimmage and he called timeout there. So timeout Portland State. They will have two remaining. We will take a timeout as well. Welcome back to Watson Stadium, second quarter. Oregon leading Portland State, 21-3. The Vikings got on the board first this afternoon. Their initial drive was halted in Oregon territory. Jeff Crowell came in, booted a 45-yard field goal that hit the crossbar and bounced over. And the Vikings had the first points of the game. But on Oregon's first possession, they marched right down the field. Danny O'Neill and company looking very sharp. The touchdown pass to... Kristen McLemore from 33 yards out. The next possession, a one-yard run by Kenny Wheaton, and it was 14-3. And then Wil Wilcox, the reception from O'Neill, and the Ducks lead 21-3. Whistle, and we have a flag thrown in. Looks like one of the Vikings might have come out of that three-point stance. Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Allen is 7 of 13. Been kind of streaky today, 54 yards. Tony Graziani, one of six for 12 yards. Danny O'Neill, meanwhile, uh, has been letter perfect, seven out of seven. Well, Portland State struggling a little bit on offense. It's obvious that the adrenaline has worn off here, and they're starting to make some mental errors. Second and seven. Allen, dump pass over the middle, caught by Steve Pappen. And he slips and falls as Alex Molden was about to hit him. We had rain this morning, although for this Omni turf, they need to water the field before play anyway. So the rain actually, you know, uh, yeah, the turf's no wetter than it would been yep. had they come out there and With done the, sprinklers. the usual sprinkler thing. Last situation, a quick dump pass over the middle. And, and you know, the one difference, I think, between Division I and Division II teams is the pursuit of defense. There is so much speed on defense. So clearly, Oregon secondary is uh, indicating, is showing that. Portland State is 0 for 5 in third down conversion so far. Third and two here. Allen to throw, and this ball is, oh, what a tremendous catch by the tight end, Bob Gitson. Bob Gitchum, a great, great one-headed catch and a Viking first down. Wow. And he needed all of that 6-6 six, six frame. That was a tremendous play. That's why Bob is touted as a preseason All-American. Re reverting back to a conversation we had Nick Aliotti, the defensive coach, he said, I want to see Chad Coda cover their tight end. He may not make the play, but he's going to be right there. And as you see, Coda trying to catch up to Gritsum. That is a tremendous catch. You won't see much better than that. No, you will not. The gain of 24 and the Vikings back in Oregon territory for the second time this afternoon. First third down conversion, one for six so far. Allen on a half roll. He's got Croston first down inside the 10. Dante Lewis made the stop, but Kyle Croston, a young man who attended Oregon, was a quarterback, then a safety, 
He really looked forward to coming back and playing today here at Autzen Stadium. Well, there are a lot of people here with mixed emotions right now. I imagine knowing Kyle as I do, I feel glad that he's out there playing football. On the other hand, uh, catching a first down, getting into scoring territory against Oregon, uh, not quite so happy about that. Good kid. Just a real solid good kid. And hope uh, he gets an opportunity to play a lot for the Vikings here in his senior year. It's first and goal from just inside the 10 yard line. Long count. They fake the counter. Here comes Allen on a pitch. No, he keeps it. And he's got some daylight wrapped up from behind. Boy, excellent ball fake there by Kyle Allen. And he's down to the Oregon three where he's wrapped up by Troy Bailey. Well, this is what Kyle Allen can do and gives Portland State. A guy that can run the football. Great fake that he put on Mark Schmidt. And your blood pressure goes up as a coach as the ball comes up and over the helmet. You saw <laughs> O'Neill try to do that. Similar, got a fumble earlier on, but uh, great athletic ability there. We all knew that. As Neil Zambuka shared with us, hey, this guy on the run can create some real damage. Double tight end for the Vikings. They'll give it to Derek Holmes. He tries the right side. Forget it. Good night. Chad Cota put the helmet on his chest and just buried him. That's how you play strong safety. <laughs> good night. That's a good way to describe that. Watch this hit, folks, on the left side Oregon's defense. Pow. Got some help from Rich Rule. Now it's third and goal from the four. And this is a, I'll tell you, you know, you don't want them to be in this situation a lot, but it's nice to see your defense get a chance to be tested early, see what they're made of. Look for Hunden or Matt James here. Hunden with that size and James, a real good hands man. They had a little crossing pattern. There's James, touchdown. The Ducks didn't cover the crossing pattern, a little pick down at the goal line. And Matt James with a Portland State touchdown. And that's just a basic play that, as a secondary, you've got to be able to cover. You can't give a three yard cushion down at the goal line. It's the very same play that. Uh, SC victimized uh, Oregon a couple years ago down here with a little crossing pattern and yes as you mentioned that's a very basic play and you, there's going to be a lot of other teams down the road run that same thing the Ducks are going to hold in there they're going to have to do a better job of defending anticipating that play and defending it. Well Matt James got caught up in the celebration but he forgot that he's the holder as well so he's got to come back out onto the field and take the gloves off. Well, give the Vikings real credit because they could have had their heads down. They've come back and uh, made this a contest. Credit the great catch by their tight end. This one's going to be blocking. You can return this. And a good, smart play by the Portland State man right there. Don't pick that thing up. Just fall on it and end the play. And you can see Tim Walsh is not a happy camper. That one was blocked right up the middle. But think, the Vikings get a touchdown. Do you think, Todd, that if the first kick's blocked, if you could get it back on the tee, you could try it again? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so the Vikings get a touchdown. 2.13 to play in the first half. It's Oregon 21 at Portland State 9. Well, the Vikings back in this one, trailing 21 to 9 as they march down the field and in all reality, that drive was made by the tremendous catch by Bob Gitsham. He made that super one-handed grab to keep the drive alive. Allen now 11 of 17 for 101 yards and the one touchdown. He's hit five in a row in eight of his last nine. Take a look at the scoring drive for Portland State. Very impressive. Good mix. Allen was razor sharp, and Matt James gets the touchdown reception. James, a very good receiver. Missed the last four games a year ago with a stress fracture. And they felt that really hurt their offensive attack. But he's back, ready to go. The young man from Hillsboro. 2.13 remaining in the first half. Interesting to see who the Ducks bring in at quarterback in the next series. Graziani's had, I think, three series and unable to move the team. Herman O'Berry about two yards deep. And the ball out at the 22. So that's where the Ducks will set up shop and a good chance here for Oregon to 
get the opportunity to run that two-minute drill with O'Neill at quarterback, 2.07 remaining in the half. As you mentioned, it's a great opportunity for a two-minute drill. You know, as a, as a coach coming into the first game, you'd like to have as many situations happen as possible so you can get practice in that. Let's go back and look yeah, at the Portland State touchdown. You're going to see, see the, the blitz. The left side, there's just a coverage mess up here, and Molden's trying to get to James. There was a crossing pattern. He just either miscommunicated or got caught up in a pick. Here's O'Neill. The blitz is on. Dump pass for Philia incomplete. Jason Heffley covering for Portland State. Ducks have all three of their timeouts at this stage. Second down and 10. The clock stopped. 2.04. Oregon working into the wind here. The clouds have reformed around Autzen Stadium. I don't think it has rained since the ball game started. But into that wind, they'll make it a little more difficult. That's right, good point. And if the Ducks don't get a first down or two here, they'll be punting into the wind. They're punting average 30 yards or less. Here comes the screen. This is well set up, and then they didn't have the right communication. Believe me, folks, that might have been a touchdown. That's how far they had sucked into Portland State defense. And Phil Yogg just couldn't get away from the offensive line. Well, inadvertently, number 76, Willie Rife, trying to get out of the way, tripped up Phil Yogg. Of course, in a situation like this, he wants to avoid the ball hitting him. That could be a penalty. You see Reef slipping his block on the right side. He's going to come back here, and that, oh, his left foot makes the tackle. There's a lot of running room out to yep. the left side here. And with Phil Yaw's speed, there aren't many guys that would have caught him. But now Portland State wisely takes us a timeout. 1.47 to go in the half. And they're down only 21 to 9. So Oregon offensively, razor sharp in the first quarter, went with the second team uh, quarterback and some of the other positions and haven't been able to do anything. You look at the total yards in the second quarter, dominated by Portland State after the Ducks had had about 150 total yards in the first quarter. You sense, you know, you look back and say, what if and that, but the first responsibility is to win the football game. The second one is to play your troops. And it, the Ducks, in trying to do both simultaneously, maybe have given Portland State a window of opportunity. They may have. Uh, you know, looking ahead here, if the Ducks fail to convert on third down, they have done so six out of nine so far. But they'll be punting into the wind. The last uh, punt rush, Portland State put a lot of pressure on the punter, came very close. It's third down and about 12. O'Neill the out pattern for McLemore, and this ball is incomplete. Defending Eric Reese. That ball underthrown, and I believe affected by the wind. So now the clock is stopped with 140. And Portland State will get the football with the wind at its back. Not a good offensive series by Oregon. Not good timing there on the screen pass on the second down. And O'Neill now with his first couple of incompletions of the game. Well, this is the first third down that O'Neill has failed to convert. They don't have face guarding in college football, or that would have been a classic textbook example of it. Reese made no attempt at the ball. And I would expect Portland State to come after this punt. So the freshman, Matt Belden, tested right here, deep in his own territory. They're going to set up the return. It's another wobbling kick that gets a good bounce, and uh, Hunden has to watch it roll. The, the bounce adds another 17 yards to the punt. So that will statistically be his best punt of the day, 47 yards. 128 remaining in the half. The Vikings and the Ducks, Oregon leading 21-9. First and 10 for the Vikings at their own 33. New quarterback in the ball game, and it's almost intercepted. Interesting situation, Josh Racanelli. 6'3", junior, transfer from Boise State. In a quarterback for Portland State. Do not know if Kyle Allen was injured. Do we look down on the sideline or they just want to get him some work? So Josh Racanelli from Mountain View High School in the Portland area. Portland, Vancouver area. Got in a couple of games last year, threw for a touchdown, 7 of 16. There's a pass, and there's a little miscommunication between Hunden and his quarterback. So it will be 
third down and ten. And now if you're Oregon, you're thinking if we stop him here, we get it back. That's right. The Vikings with the only points of the second quarter. Touchdown pass from Kyle Allen to Matt James. Well, Portland State's one for seven on third down conversions. There's a big one here. Here comes the blitz. Fake the draw. And that will go as a big loss. See if Oregon takes timeout. Rich Brooks is yelling for timeout. And the Ducks don't get it. They still don't get it. And now they finally do. That's about six, eight seconds lost there. So 105 remaining in the quarter. Loss of nine on the play for Portland State. That was not what Tim Walsh wanted to see no. in that series. And now here's an opportunity to try your punt rush. Mm -hmm. You know, really nothing, nothing to lose by, uh, well, not a lot to risk by roughing the kicker penalty at this stage. They are going to put another a couple of seconds back on the clock, so they'll mark it at 109. Well, Herman O'Berry back there, the Ducks wanted to improve on special teams, desperately wanted to improve their punt return area. It's a phase of the game that can really spark a team, make a difference. Last year, they averaged only about five and a half yards of return, did not have any touchdowns on the punt return game. And Herman O'Berry is a guy they feel that can make a difference back there with his athletic ability. Let's see if they come after him like you were saying, Ken. Nope, they got the return on here. Crowell, a wobbler. O'Berry has to come near sideline, has it, but the wedge is set up all the way on the other side. Can he get around it? Yes, he can. And he's got a chance. Herman O'Berry, a block by Lamont Woods, and Eric Reese, a touchdown saving tackle at the 19. Well, as we had seen on a couple previous punts, Oregon very good at establishing that picket line down their sideline. Just a matter of O'Berry being able to get to it. In that case, the punt, by coming over this far to the, this side of the field, allowed the coverage to get out of position. As you can see, O'Berry gets rid of that first uh, pursuer. And he's off to the races. That punt going to the wide side really hurt the coverage. And you can see O'Berry down the sideline. That's a nice block by Lamont Woods. And then Eric Reese, the safety, in this case, literally the safety for Portland State, made the tackle. So a great return of 45 yards by Herman O'Berry. There was also a penalty on Portland State during the run back. And so tack on an additional 10 yards, and the Ducks will have the football inside the 20-yard line. That's a big turnabout. You know, Portland State 21-9 going in is in a control. But you could see that coming, Todd. There were really only three guys in coverage. Everyone else was out of position or blocked. And had a punt been kicked long enough earlier, O'Berry might have been able to do that earlier in the kick contest. And so he's great speed, though, going from one sideline to the other to pick up the wedge. So it's first and goal for Oregon. The ball marked at the nine-yard line. O'Neill already has two touchdown passes this afternoon, one to McLemore and one to Josh Wilcox. And if I were the Ducks right now, I would run the same pattern Portland State ran against me earlier. There's a, a little bit of a mismatch out here. The Safety number 22 on McLemore. Right side, nothing doing. Oregon has one remaining timeout. A little surprised they used it there, but after that running play, it takes a while to unpile everybody. John Gentry, the left corner, made the stop for Portland State. So it'll be second down and goal from the nine. At halftime, we'll get you all up to date with the statistics, have the first half highlights, talk about the second half. Oregon in control most of the way this afternoon. Vikings scoring first on a field goal, but then Oregon with three straight touchdowns to establish control. The Vikings, though, have gotten back into it with a touchdown here in the second quarter. Now Oregon knocking on the door. Dino Filioff, 14 carries today, 41 yards. Ricky Whittle, the fractured thumb in the final preseason scrimmage. He has a cast on the thumb, and as soon as the adhesions heal, he may be able to come back. O'Neill stumbles, fires near side. This one is batted away at the last minute by Larry Austin. 
intended for Corey Murphy. That's why they like Austin. Uh, he's third team All-American last year, and he was actually, it, it, the Ducks are lucky he didn't pick it and go the distance here. But this is a risky play. As you can see, O'Neill stumbles coming out from the center, throws the ball to the wide side of the field. It's the air a long time. Austin makes the gamble and cuts the ball off. Still, the mismatch is on the safety against the inside receiver. You're going against their best man-man -man defender there. Here's the screen set up to Filia. Does he have the speed of the corner? Yes, he does. And he got a tremendous block by Willie Reif, number 76. Just took the feet out from under the linebacker, and that enabled Filia to waltz into the end zone. Third touchdown pass of the afternoon for Danny O'Neill, and he is now second on Oregon's all-time list for touchdown passes, having passed, no pun intended, Chris Miller this afternoon. Only Bill Musgrave is ahead of Danny O'Neill. Well, you were right about that block by number 76, Willie Wright, and you see he gets a big hug by Steve Greatwood, the offensive line coach. He doesn't make the block, that it's a tackle for a three-yard gain. See O'Neill moving up the chart, 17 to tie. Bill Musgrave, Matt Belden into tack on his fourth point after, and he does, and then gets knocked down, and there will be a penalty on Portland State. Larry Austin got underneath Belden there, and Belden trots off the field. They don't want to lose him. And so the Ducks, as a result of that long punt return by Herman O'Berry, sets up the fourth touchdown of the afternoon with 36 seconds remaining in the first half. Folks, if you watch on the left side of your screen here, the pride of Springfield High School, Willie Reif, is going to throw a textbook block that allows this pass completion to come into a touchdown. Right there, a great block by the sophomore, Willie Reif. From Springfield, but Thurston High School. I know the Colts and their fans would like me to well, make I, that Well, I meant the, the pride of Springfield right. metropolitan area. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Belden with a strip kick. Dribbles itself and is dangerously booted around and then fallen upon by Portland State at the eight-yard line. Well, let's take a look at the scoring drive for the Ducks, set up by that 45-yard punt return by Herman O'Berry. Three plays. Dino Filia gets credit for the six points. Let's give three of those points to Willie Wright, though. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's, only be fair. it's great to see an offensive lineman clearly throw a block out where everyone can see it. Oftentimes the work they do is inside what they call the pit, you know, the trenches. They don't get a lot of notoriety. That was a great block. So the Vikings here with four, 34 seconds remaining. They do have one timeout left, but they'll be conservative here. Keep it on the ground. That's Steve Pappen. He's met right at the line of scrimmage by Reggie Jordan, Jeremy Asher. And the Vikings probably will be content to run out the clock. The Ducks not so content. They'll call timeout 22 seconds remaining. Oregon leading 28 to 9. The season opener for the Ducks. Next week it's on to Hawaii to take on the Rainbows, who opened this week against BYU, and then back home for two more non conference home games against Utah and Iowa. Very interesting matchups. Utah, mm -hmm. considered a real force in the WAC conference, uh, gained a lot of respectability the last couple years going to consecutive bowl games, played very well against USC when USC was playing very well at the end of the year. And Iowa, somewhat of a, a disappointment last year. They tailed off and were thrashed by California in the Alamo Bowl. But someone say, says that uh, Hayden Fry, the coach there, is under some heat. You know, teams tend to play a little better when their head man's under some heat. Now, it's hard to imagine. All he's done is taken them to three Rose Bowls. Had a winning season just about every year. Been to a bowl game just about every year. And that's a tough conference. Six Big Ten teams went to bowl games last year, I believe. They'll give it to Holmes again. They'll get to the 10, the 11, maybe the 12-yard line, and that should be the final play of the first half. Derek Barnes at the bottom of the stack along with Troy Bailey. So the clock winds down. The two teams head them up, move them into the locker room for halftime, and we'll get set for our halftime activities from Watson Stadium. The halftime score. The season opener, Oregon leading Portland State 28 to 9. All right, ready for the start of the second half. Oregon on top 28 to 9. They will receive to start the second half. Herman O'Berry, the 
Hunt returner had that big 45 yarder. One of the deep men for Oregon. The other one is Patrick Johnson. Jeff Crowell will boot it away for Portland State. The wind kicked up considerably during the halftime. The clouds remain here at Otson. We started today's game in bright sunshine, but the clouds have moved in. We had rain today for the first time, must be two months. So that means football is in the air. Crowell to boot it away. It's a good long one. This one go to Patrick Johnson over his head and through for the touchback. Let's look at the scoring drives. First of all, the possessions for Oregon. You can see they came out of the gate very quick. That third score, the result of a fumble recovery at the Portland State 19-yard line. And then they finished the half strong thanks to the punt return and the touchdown pass to Philia. For Portland State, they started very good as well. Touch, uh, field goal on the opening possession and then sputtered a bit before finally putting together that 56-yard touchdown drive. So the Oregon first-team offense in there to start the second half. They'll give it to Phil Yaw, try the sweep. He bounces to the outside. Not a good decision. Holding call on Wilcox, and Phil Yaw is buried for a loss of five. Well, we alluded at halftime about the coordination between the backs and the offensive line. There's a situation. Phil Yaw had something. Had he been able to cut that ball up inside, Wilcox had come in motion and kicked the outside man out. Travis Beard, nice job there on the right side to mess that play up. But as you can see, you'd, you'd like Phil Yaw to cut inside Wilcox's block there. There's no way you're going to beat him outside. And then plenty of help from his mates. And it looked like Eric Reed had been pulling too, and there was something. But that's something that's going to have to be worked out. You know, we talk about uh, the rushing attack over the years. So one thing about Oregon so far in the first half is they have called the 21 running plays and there have been times they've not run that many in a game. This is Blake Spence in motion. Redshirt freshman tight end. They'll give it to Phil Yon. Now he cuts it up there with good hard running this time. Gains seven. And so the Ducks will be faced with third down seven. and eight. Once again, Travis, Travis Beard. Beard. Boy, he has been in on a lot of plays. They say he's a big play kind of a guy. Had a severe knee injury and has rehabilitated that and is playing well this afternoon. Back in for Portland State comes Akaba Delaney, number 99. He'll be the anchor in the middle, and the man we talked about, Beard, will uh, come out in this passing, probable passing situation. Spence again goes in motion. O'Neill looking for the screen back. Great play by Eric Reese to safety. Oh, he slipped inside there, and we have a late flag thrown as well. But boy, what a great play by Eric Reese. He smelled out the screen all the way. Nice halftime adjustment by the Portland State coaching staff. That play had been open two times earlier for the Ducks. Personal foul against Portland State will wipe away that fine defensive play. As you can see, Phil Yaw drifts to his right, then comes back to the left, and here's a situation where the force man is too far upfield before Reed, the kickout guy, could get there. And that's just a great, great reaction by the safety. All for naught as the personal foul after the play on Portland State. So Oregon maintains possession of the football. That safety, uh, Eric Reese from Philoma, the junior, played for Woody Bennett, the former Philoma head coach. O'Neill in the pocket. McLemore incomplete. Good pressure this time as once again it's Brian Stromberg applying the heat, putting a good lick on O'Neill. You, you know, O'Neill, sorry, Ken, excuse me. I do want to mention O'Neill. For all that has been said about him statistically, the one statistic that might be as important as anybody else or anything else is that he has started the last 24 games. Uh, he's, he's been very durable after a period of which you never knew who was going to play quarterback for the Ducks. One thing is. We're not going to be able to see it, but O'Neill did a nice job of stepping up there. Years past, we've seen him get a little bit confused and start running around. That's an area of the game that he has really improved on. Seeing total yards right up there. O'Neill again eludes pressure. He needs to get down, and he's belted down after a gain of seven. O'Neill scrambling out of the pocket, but he took a big hit over there by Ken Harrison. 
Well, up front right now, the Ducks don't look too impressive. They are uh, tried a couple of running plays, nothing there. The pass protection, they've been doing some play action things here. O'Neill's been running for his life. Good, a good outside pressure there. And O'Neill showing what the athlete he is. Wow, Ken Harrison, young man from Walla Walla Community College, got a big hit. Quick out pattern to Murphy. Did he catch it? Did he get his hands underneath? They say yes, and he has the first down. The Portland State coaching staff trying to lobby for the incompletion, but to no avail. And Murphy, good job of getting down and catching that one. Have you noticed those coaching uh, shirts that the Portland State uh, coaches have? Half of them, half of them looks like referees. You know, the left side of their shirt is <laughs> vertical stripes. <laughs> The right sleeve. I like those, though. Nice. I like that. I think it's an optometrist nightmare. <laughs> Obviously, only half the design got to the factory. <laughs> There's some power running inside by Dino Filias. The Ducks try to soften up the belly there. Eric Reese along with Marcus Royster for Portland State. Marcus Royster's twin brother, Mazio Royster, played for USC. And then with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFL. Dino hit it up inside real nice there. Five yards, good surge by the interior of the line. Frankly, I have felt there have been some times when had he been more inclined to turn it inside, there have been some seams there. Fillion, now the cutback, trying to get the Jets going. And he puts his head down a little bit short of the first down and a late flag, two flags down on the play. Larry Austin and Eric Reese. Converge to double team on Philia. The opening possession of the third quarter. Yards, Face mask the the run. infraction against Portland State, and that will give Oregon a first down. Oregon leading 28 to 9. O'Neill pass. Reads the defense out to Philly on the flat. 35-30, breaks a tackle, 25 down to the 22-yard line. Good effort by Dino Philly. Just a little swing pattern, and Philly doing it on his own. Nice job by O'Neill there of waiting for Philly to clear the defender. That's a play earlier they had attempted, and Philly had dropped the ball. Quick little way of getting the ball outside. Nice, so, nice touch on the football, too. Very nice. O'Neill playing with so much confidence. And Phil Yaw still learning. Uh, you have to remember that he did not play a whole lot at Taft Junior College and didn't play that much last year. And you can see Rick Anderson finally had to make the tackle. John Gentry, number 23, was faked out completely on that play. O'Neill over the middle, and he overthrows Josh Wilcox. Vernon Mitchell, one of those in the coverage for Portland State. And along with Sammy Burroughs. They like Sammy Burroughs, a former safety, and he comes in with pretty good credentials, having been recruited by the likes of California and also Arizona State. So a good athlete, a transfer from Mount San Antonio Junior College. Second down and 10 for Oregon. Go back to the eye. This is Kenny Wheaton to the outside. And, oh, great play over there by Burroughs. And now you can see why they like him. Not only took on the blocker, but made the stop. One thing about young running backs uh, who have great speed, they have a tendency to rely on that speed and oftentimes take the ball outside when they should try to head it up inside. Again, another situation. They may not go for a touchdown turning it inside, but they're getting caught running sideways. So Wheaton stays in. Dwayne Jones, the fullback. Split near side, Murphy and McLemore. Here's O'Neill. Nobody open. Now he'll scramble. And he'll just take it out of bounds and get as much as he can. Good play by O'Neill. He'll gain about five yards, and that'll set up a field goal attempt. And an opportunity here for Matt Belden in a game situation to try a field goal. He's been perfect on extra points today. I give Portland State's defense a lot of credit right now. They've given up a couple of plays so far, but they're jamming up the... The line of scrimmage, they put pretty good pressure on O'Neill and kept him contained. I think that had he been able to stop there and set his feet, he had a, a receiver back inside, but a lot easier to see from up here. Ryan Perry Smith will be the holder. 
Snapper is Rob Williams. Pretty good snap and hold. Penalty flag. The kick is up, and the kick is through, but let's await the penalty flag. And now they're going to wave it off. So that's a field goal for Matt Belden, his first. He's happy about that, and why not? He gets three more points for the Ducks. They extend their lead 31-9. The Ducks extend their lead, 31-9 on the field goal by Matt Belden. So Belden now to kick it away. This will be Larry Austin at the eight. Tries the outside, it's a foot race now, 30, out near the 35-yard line. So good return by Larry Austin. And the Vikings will set up shop. 26-yard return by Austin. He's a good athlete. They're gonna, we're gonna see a lot of uh, Larry Austin for Portland State this year. He's been very impressive, not only in the special teams area, but also as a cornerback this afternoon. Kyle Allen back in at quarterback for the Vikings at the 34-yard line. First half, Allen was 11 of 19 for 101 yards and one touchdown. Comes the out pattern. Hunden thrown a little bit behind him, and Molden was able to get there in time to help break it up. Molden has looked very sharp today on every play except uh, the touchdown, where it looked like there was some miscommunication on the coverage. You said he's, he has come a long way to be here today. Uh, rehabilitation from a couple of, uh, you know, for a cornerback to hurt his knee as seriously as he did, that's remarkable that he's out here playing as well and as quick, quickly as he has. Is Holmes in the slot? There's some movement. Holmes with a reception. He breaks the tackle of Asher and is bumped out of bounds. It would be a first down, but I think the Vikings got started a little bit early there. Well, Allen called the automatic, and the wide receiver, Hunden, took off a little bit early. I like what I've seen from Derek Holmes as a running back. He's a big, strong kid. He's going to be a force motion. for Portland State On the offense, year. five yards, repeat the down. I think what uh, Portland State is seeing today that they probably won't see all year long is something you alluded to, Ken, and that is defensive speed. You know, the reaction by the defense to what you're doing. Right. Although Oregon uh, was not a, a, you know, a formidable defense last year, everyone agrees the real strength they have to offer early on is their coverage. They've got people who can cover one-on-one -on -one and... Portland State will face no better team in that area all year long. The Vikings now penalized 11 times for 82 yards. Allender roll and he's dumped behind the line. That'll be a sack and it'll go to Mark Sliman. Sliman injured last year, had to have surgery. So he has come a long way as well. A senior started, I remember at UCLA a couple of years ago. And uh, was just a young pup at that time getting thrown into the fire late in the year. Good pressure from the outside on the left side. Troy Bailey flushed the quarterback, Allen, right back into Mark Sliman. Third and 15. Fake the draw. Look out, Kyle. You're running the wrong way, baby. Very wise to get out of bounds. Now will go as a sack by Bryant Jackson. <laughs> so Bryant Jackson gets his sack. Big old nose guard, 6'1", 280. Well, he got a real close up front personal look of Derek Barnes who chased him face mask and face mask for about 30 yards there. But that's so hard, you know, you have your hands up trying to keep him from catch, throwing the ball and then tackle him at the same time. And the worst thing about that sack for Bryant is it came all the way on the other side of the field. <laughs> well, let's see what the punt return can do. The Ducks have had good luck setting up the sideline return so far. Looks like they got the return on here. Spiral, O'Berry at the 46-yard line. 
A lot of dancing. Holds on to the ball, gets to the 40. But you can see that Herman O'Berry will give the Ducks some shiftiness back there, the ability to cut and explode. Eight-yard return after the 34-yard punt. And so Oregon with possession at the PSU 39-yard line. Travis Beard to tackle. Hello, Barry really looks like he wants to return it. You know, he's not back there to wave his hand and get a fair catch. And something the Oregon coaches told us yesterday, they really like his aggressiveness. Get that unit fired up. O'Neill remains the quarterback. Pulo Malapai is the lone back. He comes out of the backfield. O'Neill far side. Wilcox has it. Gain of about six. Ridden out of bounds over there once again by Sammy Burroughs. Called his name three or four times here just in the third quarter. Well, and here's the situation now. It's a, a short yardage situation where the Ducks look for play action possibly here. O'Neill right on the money. Good catch by Wilcox. I yeah. think I think the Ducks are in pretty good shape at tight end this year. Yeah, they have uh, several good quality young tight ends. Wilcox, Matt Reinhardt injured, a redshirt freshman. Blake Smith's good hands out of the backfield. Penalty flag, two of them. Marcel Stewart took his eyes off the football, getting his first Division One experience. Young six-foot junior from Diablo Valley Junior College. Last year, he ran for 900 yards. In a one-back offense, offense for the featured Offside. back there. And had a couple of big games, Repeat 172 yards versus West Valley, and then 189 yards and two touchdowns against the College of Sequoias. But today, he's getting his first Division I opportunity, initially recruited by San Jose State. As you can see, Coach Brooks there a little bit disappointed with a holding call. You know, the offensive linemen are allowed to use their hands uh, to push, to punch, that kind of thing every once in a while as those defensive linemen, you know, crisscross and so on. It's very easy to get a hook on them. Well, they've waved off the penalty flag. That was nice of them. Yes. Ron Richmond are oh, offsetting penalties, excuse me. So now they give it on the draw to Stewart. Nice hole there, and he has the first down to the 24-yard line. So Marcel Stewart started training camp a little bit behind everybody else and uh, obviously things got a little more difficult when he had a bit of a hamstring problem early in camp Rick Anderson made the tackle but you know a young man that's going to get some playing time as long as Ricky Whittle is on the sidelines let's take a look at Steve Harden a big 324 pound all-american candidate considered one of the premier offensive tackles in college football there he was his job was to seal the inside gap and he did do just that it's a lot easier to do at 300 pounds Here's the counter play. Get up the field, Stewart. He does. Puts his head forward, and now the Oregon offensive line beginning to take control of the line of scrimmage. Talking with Gary Campbell yesterday about Stewart. Stewart pulled his hamstring for the first day of practice in a warm-up drill designed to stretch out the hamstring. I just stretched it too far. <laughs> Marcus Royster and Jason Nye, the stop for Portland State. Now he'll come out of the ball game. I predict a, a, a fine career for Marcel as long as he can get past warm-ups. <laughs> Kenny Wheaton back in at tailback. O'Neill to throw. Wheaton through his hands. Well, I think. And no, oh, Willie Rife and Jeff Bockert have words, and Bockert with a shove to Rife, who walks away. Wheaton's arm shrunk a little bit as the ball <laughs> led him inside towards those two inside yeah. linebackers. Yeah, got the alligator arms. Yeah, and, it's, and you know, it's a long season. It's 12 games. you got to live. He may want to go back to defense where they do the hitting. <laughs> Ducks one for three in third down conversion so far this half. There's Wheaton trying to find a seam. He's got the first down on third and one. Well, that's something right there, third and one. And I know the you know, Portland State defense maybe not as big and physical as uh, some of the other teams Oregon will face. But on third and one, you need to be able to run the ball to get the first down, and they did. Yeah, that's right. You need to know that you're going to do it. You're, you need to have your opponents know you're going to be able to do it, too. And who do you go behind? You go behind 324 Steve Harden and about 305 Willie Rife. So you're about 630 pounds. Well, much of humanity. Of, much has been said about the inexperience of that offensive line, but I think there's a lot of talent there. Here's a little screen under with Dameron Ricketts. 
He gets inside the five and is upended there by once again Sammy Burroughs. That's a play that Oregon has run for a number of years now with a lot of success. I remember Terry Obi running that play and having great success. It's an interesting play. All the linemen are running to the outside while the receiver comes across. It looks a little bit like it, your typical traffic intersection in Albuquerque. <laughs> The green light is at all four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a flashing green light. <laughs> Should well, I go or not? nearby, right? Yeah, you shut your eyes and just run. Here's Philia looking to power it in. He's at the goal line and into the end zone for the touchdown, his second of the day. Well, they powered it in from five yards out. And Oregon has tacked on another touchdown. Good impressive drive by Oregon. Mixed. And that may be the end uh, of the activity for guys like O'Neill and uh, Philia this afternoon. Well, Oregon really mixed it up on the run and the pass there. Getting a chance to bring those young running backs along. And, I, you know, the offensive line, they need those repetitions too. So Matt Belden in to do it again. And he does. So a good day kicking for Matt Belden. With five extra points and a field goal. And with 6.42 remaining third quarter, Oregon running away with it now, 38-9. Well, the Ducks have now scored here in the third quarter on two possessions, a field goal and also a touchdown, and have extended this lead to 29 points. Well, big day for Matt Belden. He's gotten his first action at the Division I level, a true freshman. His kickoff, fielded by Austin at the seven. And there goes Austin again. And Isaac Walker had to make the stop. Belden had a chance for his first tackle, but uh, I imagine he doesn't work too often in the tackling drills. Austin with a 45-yard return. He's been a real bright spot. And uh, well, the, Ducks the Vikings have done a good job setting up the wedge. Yeah, and the Ducks have made a couple of substitutions on their kickoff coverage, but on the left side, they've been losing contain. This time, the return man comes up inside, and again, the left side of the kickoff coverage, a little bit shaky. Belden the kicker. You know, how many times did we see Tommy Thompson in mm -hmm. that situation have to make a tackle? Too many. The bounce outside, Steve Pappen, and he is absolutely buried by Rich Rule. Rule, a young man from Roseburg High School. You know, Roseburg had a number of very highly recruited athletes when Rich was there, Heath Howington being one of them. Greg Vogel, outstanding running back, and uh, Rule didn't get all the publicity because he suffered an injury and didn't play his entire senior year but he's the one guy remaining from the, those Roseburg teams still playing at the division one level Heath Howington had to give up football because of a back injury that actually miss his size and talent in the offensive line but the rich rule doing a good job here's Allen on a roll Reggie Jordan in pursuit now Allen over the middle and incomplete intended for Kyle Hawley but now the Oregon defense you sense Ken there's front seven or six whatever starting to disdain the run and they're just trying to make an effort to put the heat on Kyle Allen. Well, Allen got a quick glimpse of uh, Jeremy Asher, number 44, coming into sight, and that, I think, made the trajectory of the ball go up about 12 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's his quickest release of the afternoon. Look at Steve Pappen. Scoring drive for Oregon, seven plays, equal balance there, run pass, 39 yards. And Dino Filia on the four-yard touchdown romp. Allen this time has a man in the flat, and it is intercepted by O'Berry on a highlight film move. Oh, my goodness. He led the Pac-10 in interceptions two years ago, had seven for the season. Man alive, I'll tell you what, that was something else. That was a one-handed grab, and Portland State should be very happy that it happened on the sideline because nobody was there to stop him had he had room to take a left or a right turn there and go down the sidelines. Watch it. This is just a tremendous catch. Great hands. Whoa. 
Right. Oregon has had some good defensive backs in years past, but this guy may be as athletic and come up with spectacular plays That's as right. anybody we've seen. Remember, he had the three interceptions against Cal when he was guarding Sean Dawkins a couple of years ago. Here's Dameron Ricketts almost came down with it. Oh, oh, he did come down with it, they say. The side judge gave him credit for the reception. You know, he did have his hands on it. I don't know about control. Great effort by Ricketts, though. He was covered like a blanket. Couple of, couple of number threes going battle on the sideline. O'Neal puts it up there in a position where only the receiver is going to get a shot at it. And there's, does he have it? Yeah, he, he does. Great. He had the left foot in. Yeah, he I did. mean, it's bang, bang. And you'd like to get those every week. 26-yard pass and reception. You Boy. got you got to get him at home. Two spectacular plays in a row. Here's the reverse to Ricketts. He's got one man to beat. Good play by Ted Leach to hang in there. And we have a late flag again. This will be against Portland State for a personal foul. But Ricketts, he's got good speed. And now the Ducks trying to loosen up that PSU defense with a reverse. Well, our premier statistician, Ron Richmond, at halftime was mentioning that he would like to see the end around and what a great time to call it pretty good blocking there ron nice call ricketts does a nice job of turning it inside a late hit by uh it was royster i believe marcus royster got into it with somebody over there and we have a portland state player injured well i you know there have been some lulls in the in this game but these last three plays, Ken, you've got the interception by O'Berry, the great catch by Ricketts, and now the reverse by Ricketts. Right. And you mentioned at halftime big play capability, and I don't think it's any more evident than the last three plays we've seen. Well, we saw it in the spring game. You know, Oregon's got a lot of offensive weapons. I was a little mystified by the ninth place uh, picking by the coaches. I kind of felt like there might be a little sandbagging going on. Oregon still has... Uh, some questions to answer, but they really got some nice skill people on the outside and Rich Brooks is getting a chance right now to look at some of those young guys and see uh, what they're capable of doing. It's Larry Austin being helped off to the sidelines. Running clock third quarter 512 Oregon leading 38 to 9. O'Neal pressured throws it away. A couple of years ago Danny might not have done that. He really did mature last year and I think everybody wants Danny to be perfect on every play and he's been pretty close to that today but well, his, his quarterback coach on that play will say you were perfect he, yeah. he dropped back he gave everyone their allotted time to get open they couldn't do it and he threw it away and avoided the sack he, he did a perfect job of executing there it's not all just the quarterback for a completion the receivers have got to get open the line's got to give you protection drop play to Pulu Malapai and knifing in from that right Defensive end position is Jason Nye. They want him, and I'm talking about Nye on that play, just to run past the ball carrier. You don't even block him. I hope he just runs right by your ball carrier and you go around him for the touchdown. But he uh, got a hand in there, tripped him up. You know, Filiaw back into the ball game. Hulo Malapai will come out. Third down for Oregon and goal at the eight yard line. Ducks two for four this half in third down conversions. Patrick Johnson in the ball game now as a wide receiver as trips set to the left. O'Neal in trouble, scrambles. Now who comes to bail him out? Blake Spence tried, but there's that man Burroughs again with good coverage on the tight end. And so O'Neal incomplete, and that'll force another field goal attempt. ball at the eight. Clock stopped, 4.16 remaining in the third quarter. Dominated by Oregon. As they have a touchdown, a field goal, and looking for three more here in the period. Last year, the Ducks averaged over 25 points a game. They look to have a lot of weapons this year and might be able to even improve upon that. This one's up and through, so Belden once again makes a field goal and once again gets knocked down after doing it. Kelly Johnson, I think, might have been the man, but whatever. Belden, welcome to college football, young man. 
He's been rough twice. <laughs> I've never seen a kicker rough more than once in a game. <laughs> Well, uh, we can wipe the points off the board there, so it's now 38 to 9, or still 38 to 9. The roughing the kicker penalty gives Oregon a first down. The Ducks accept the penalty, take the points off the board. We take it off the screen as well, and it's first and goal now from the four. O'Neill looking for his fourth touchdown pass, and he has got it. The second time to Josh Wilcox. Well, given a second opportunity, Danny O'Neill made the Viking defense pay. And O'Neill now with four touchdowns. That matches the school record that he holds himself. There have only been a handful, a couple of uh, quarterbacks that have thrown for four touchdowns in a game, and Danny O'Neill has done it several times now. Well, Portland State has only themselves to blame. Lately, they've had several penalties. Uh, kept the Ducks in it. I mean, you know, people talk about the disadvantages of junior college players. Oftentimes, uh, discipline comes into there, and right now, Portland State is not demonstrating a lot of discipline on the football field, particularly on defense. Here's the extra point, so Belden has the field goal wiped away. Well, nice to see a freshman kicker uh, take a penalty for the team. That's you know? right. you got to take one for the team, <laughs> and I'm sure he's real happy that yeah. on that extra point, he didn't get rough. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, Danny O'Neill's had a great afternoon. Great start to the season for Danny O'Neill. I'll tell you another one. Uh, there's a group of people who look at that scoreboard and smile very noticeably, uh, talking to several administrators this week. The rivalry between Portland State and Oregon goes beyond the football field. You know, we mentioned administration, fundraising, uh, corporate support, and so on. The Ducks feel like they compete very strongly with Portland State in that area for that uh, kind of support. The fact that Portland State people have said, hey, we're, our program's as good as yours, we can compete with you, has been a real source of uh, irritation to those people. O'Neill's four touchdown passes, uh, if you are wanting to note, ties the Autzen Stadium record as well. Four touchdowns thrown by a couple of others. Let's take a look at number four here to Josh Wilcox. You know, the Oregon is really really likes to look at the tight end in that scoring red zone they call it and uh, Wilcox taking over for Willie Tate in that area anyway the other guys that have thrown for four touchdown passes here at Autzen Jeff Van Raphorst remember him from Arizona State Dan Fouts versus Idaho in 1970 and Tom Blanchard another ex duck versus the Vandals in 1969 Belden's kick fielded by Holmes and he just does stay in bounds and he gets out to the 24-yard line. Look at the scoring drive for the Ducks. Aided by the roughing the kicker penalty. Six plays. A touchdown pass to Josh Wilcox. His second touchdown reception of the afternoon. Well, then the late hit after the completion to the right side hurt them as well. Allen remains the quarterback. He's been the quarterback for every series except the last offensive series for Portland State in the first half. Here's Asher on a blitz. Allen breaks contain. 30, 35, 38-yard line. That's a first down. Alex Molden tripped him up. And I was just going to say, looked like an injured player down there, and I think it might be one of the Portland State receivers. Kyle Allen, you see, will step up. Asher on the outside is rushing, is kicked out by the back, and Allen doing what uh, we were told before the game that he does so well. Gets a big first down. It looks like James Hunden. Someone fell on the back of his legs. Well, See a lot of those kinds of situations uh, end up in knee injuries. You know, people fall on the back of your legs. You know, Portland State has to have and I guess any college program you have to have connections in recruiting you have to know people that know people you know all about that but you know how do certain players get to certain schools James Hunden played at the San Francisco City College and the offensive coordinator there happened to be Tim Walsh's college roommate so you know you give this guy a call because you have a player that 
wants to go to a Division II school, and that's how Hunden arrived at Portland State. Let's hope that it's not a serious injury. Let's see if we can see the injury again here. He is on the ground. You see number nine blocking Dante Lewis there, and then it looked like Paul Jensen landed on his left leg. Well, he made the uh, cardinal mistake for a receiver. He was trying to block on the play, and that's, you know, receivers will tell you that uh, blocking is really not what they want to do, and that's probably one of the reasons why right there. Flag on the play, Allen. Blindside hit by Paul Jensen. This one up for grabs. Jeremy Asher with the interception. Asher, a great high school running back at Tigard High School. <laughs> Let everybody on the Portland State roster take a crack at him there. But Jeremy Asher with the interception. We do have a penalty flag on the play. It was thrown at the line of scrimmage. Well, credit Paul Jensen, number 38, for setting up that scenario. Allen never saw, you know, they say that for a right-handed quarterback, uh, of course, now in that situation, Formation you should be able to see the offense. right side. The penalty is refused. First down, Oregon. procedure refused. But any time you get a quarterback in the blind side like this, a fumble or, in this case, a deflected pass, watch Jensen just hit him like a runaway truck. Pow! I've seen a lot of linebackers drop that ball. And you know, Asher's trying to get to that wall. <laughs> Which wall? The sideline wall or his teammates? <laughs> Graziani back in at quarterback for Oregon as they take over at the 42-yard line. Go back to Kenny Wheaton. He cuts back into the middle. A good line surge. Gets him about three. And now, now one census. Just looking at some of the extracurricular activity going on after plays. An immense amount of frustration. There's a lot of yakking and talking now that we didn't see in the first quarter. Jeff Bockert right there getting into it a bit with Dwayne Jones. Yeah, and, uh, you know, things are going against him. We, we identified on the last uh, series the Portland State defense is losing a little bit of its cohesiveness and discipline and you know, watch this uh, this is the kind of stuff that happens after the game uh, Bachwood looks like he's trying to break off the face mask Raziani scurries out of bounds right at about the line of scrimmage that's a great job on the replay there yeah a lot of times good camera uh, work well, it was such a good replay, we wanted to miss that uh, three-yard gain. Third down and seven now for Oregon. Two and a half minutes remaining in a prolonged third quarter. But I don't think Bockworth was saying, hey, nice run on that play. So Graziani in there at quarterback. Wheaton, along with Dwayne Jones, Wide receivers Ricketts and Patrick Johnson. Here comes the blitz by Portland State. And that one is intercepted. And this one may be a touchdown. It will be a touchdown unless he falls over his own man. And running from the score is Ken Harrison. And I don't know where Graziani was throwing that one, but it was right in the midst of Ken Harrison. It was unfortunate because his tight end was wide open over the middle for a first down. 64-yard interception for the touchdown. <laughs> Embarrassment of all embarrassments, tackled by a, a cheerleader. <laughs> At least he wasn't hurt. <laughs> oh my gosh. Get her a uniform. Well, poor guy. <laughs> well, one of life's great moments, spoiled by one of life's embarrassing moments. Well, it's an embarrassment of two different kinds there, as you see Graziani getting the word from Coach Brooks and Mike Bellotti. Extra point by Crowell is good, and so the Vikings on the board thanks to their defense. 45-16, 224 remaining in the third period. Big moment for Ken Harrison, the transfer from Walla Walla Community College. Interception pick, 64 yards for the touchdown. The Vikings get their second six-pointer of the afternoon. 
Graziani had just decided who he was going to throw to beforehand. He threw it to a covered outside receiver, and you can see that once he released it, uh, he never saw the rest of it, which is probably good because it was touched down the other way. Crowell, another booming kick. This will go through the end zone. Well, they think at Portland State that they are an improved team in the kicking area this year. They feel they have better athletes for coverage, better athletes to do a number of things, but they also believe that with Jeff Crowell, they've got a guy that can handle both the punting and the kicking, and they will not drop off in that area at all. Well, the score is a little bit out of hand right now, but, you know, you look at uh, the punting game has really hurt Portland State early in the game. Ducks, good field position. It's been more of a case of Portland State unable to cover the big play players of the Ducks. Marcel Stewart with the handoff from Graziani. So now we're going to see the reserves for Oregon in this situation. Ricky Anderson, the stop for Portland State. A chance for some of these guys that haven't played at all in a Division I game to get some playing time. See Rob Williams in there. One of the guard at positions. Both coaches, great. Both coaches right now are struggling to have their players maintain focus on the game. There's a lot of pushing and discussion after every... Uh, this is what's, you know, these, these two schools are two hours apart and a lot of people know each other and have probably given each other a hard time about this game for a long time well let's go back to why this game was scheduled as we see the penalty flag there this game was scheduled initially because Oregon got a 12th game opportunity by going to Hawaii so they could play a 12th game meanwhile Portland State is having tremendous success at the division two level and Pokey Allen then the coach at Portland State you know, it really had the folks in the, the Portland area excited about his program, and there was talk at the time, whether it was boosters or whatever, people in the media, hey, you know, Portland State's pretty good. Uh, you know, maybe they can uh, go down there and beat Oregon. Remember Oregon in 1991 uh, uh, had that horrible year. And so they scheduled the game. Portland State gets a guarantee of 75000 Blake Spence on the reception. He turns it upfield, and he can run. This guy is a big, strong, fast tight end, and he's got a first down before knocked out of bounds by Portland State's Neil Fendall. So Blake Spence, Josh Wilcox, Matt Reinhart, when he is back in action, give Oregon a good trio at the tight end position. Gain of 28 yards. 16 for 24, Danny O'Neill. One out of four completions a touchdown. That's that's pretty that's gonna help <laughs> passing efficiency. See Danny O'Neill has the number of three hundred yard or four uh, touchdown pass games as all the other Oregon quarterbacks combined. Pretty impressive company. First down it comes to Marcel Stewart, left side, 45 40, 38 yard line. Once again, it's Neil Fendel making the tackle for Portland State. Well, getting back to that, uh, how the game came about, you know, Pokey, uh, in building his program, did a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, work with the corporate world. And, you know, frankly, Portland State at that stage really depended on that. They don't oh, yeah. get a Rose Bowl share like the Ducks do and a lot of the other television revenues and so on. So it's, it's been interesting to hear of the kind of bitter rivalry over the corporate dollar. Mm-hmm. Graziani to throw, has time, throws deep. He's got a man, Patrick Johnson, and he can't quite get to it. Pass interference on Portland State. Fendel got turned around a little bit as Patrick Johnson tried to come back for the ball. Patrick Johnson will give Oregon a deep threat. After all, when you want run under 21 seconds for the 200 and 10-3 in the 100, you get people's attention. Well, it was interesting that he slowed down a little bit, and then the ball was in the air. He kind of took off again, and he caught the uh, defender, number six, Neil Fendel, by a surprise. I'll tell you, nothing can make up for speed. Nice job by Graziani of stepping up. He knows he's going to get hit, puts the ball out there. And that interference, that bumping there, definitely hindered him from a chance of catching a touchdown pass. Good play, though. I mean, in college football, you're going to give up 15 yards. If he doesn't bump him, he gives up six points. Patrick Johnson from Redlands, California. Here's the handoff once again to Marcel Stewart. And it's Fendel making the stop at the 20-yard line, gain of four. Patrick Johnson, the speedster out of Redlands. The coaches describe him, and you know, a lot of guys that run 10-3 are track guys that they converted to football players, but 
Mike Bellotti believes that Patrick Johnson is a football player who just happens to run 10 3. And Damon Griffin, the other freshman wide receiver that uh, we may see at some point in the season from Monrovia, California, also a league sprint champion. So the Ducks trying to recruit speed at the wide receiver position. Well, I, I think their their attitude, the coaches, is that although we do have uh, these, you know, these older receivers who have proven track records, we've got some young guys in a position to play and do some uh, things right away. So we're not gonna we're not gonna keep them in storage all along. And it's nice they get a, situ a situation here where they can get in some good game action. Well, big third quarter here for the Ducks. 38 seconds remaining. They're knocking on the door once again. Again, let's take a look back and you see Oregon got the field goal by Matt Belden to make it 31 to 9 after leading at the half by 28 to 9 and Dino Filia powered in from four yards out made it 38 to 9 then the Ducks had a field goal they took it away and decided to continue the drive after the penalty and so they got Danny O'Neill's fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon second to Josh Wilcox and then Ken Harrison for Portland State the 64 yard 65-yard interception return for the touch. Here comes the screen set up to Stewart. Oh, well defended. Oh, very, very well defended. And we may have two injured players. That might have been Harrison again over there. He might be hurt. Wow, that was a violent collision. You know, the Ducks can have 23 first downs today. Portland State only seven. But seven of Oregon's first down have resulted from Portland State penalties. Yeah, that, as we say, the, the discipline factor has really been noticeable, particularly in the second half. Nice play by Ken Harrison. Just scored a touchdown and was leveled by a cheerleader. I think this hit was uh, retribution. <laughs> retribution. <laughs> well, I hope the last hit hurt more than the one on the cheerleader. <laughs> End of three here at Autzen Stadium. The Ducks well on their way to an opening season victory. We head to the final 15 minutes of the season opener. Oregon leading with possession of the football. Third and 10 from the Portland State 25. Comes the blitz by the Vikings. Graziano hangs in there for as long as he can. Finds Blake Spence. Spence. As is Oregon's tradition of tight ends, tough to bring down inside the 10 of the seven yard line. Give Dwayne Jones, number 34, a pat in the back there as he picked up the blitz and allowed Graziani a chance to deliver the football. Blake Spence, very impressive as a receiver. Blake Spence, 6'3, 230 red shirt freshman from San Juan Capistrano. Capistrano. See number 49, Jason Nye helping on the stop there. So it's first and goal for Oregon. This has got to be a confidence boosting drive for Tony Graziani. They're going to run the option. Kenny Wheaton, his only option is to cut it upfield. Not much there. Well defended by Eric Reese, number 22. Portland State, 14 penalties, 106 yards. But of those 14 penalties, six personal fouls. Yeah, and, and several of them after the, the play was decided. And a couple of them gave Oregon first downs that continued drives. Oregon, meanwhile, with three. Is that uh, personal fouls or three total penalties? Three total penalties for only 22 yards. That's pretty good in a first game. First game, you expect things to be a little ragged, and Oregon has been good in that department. Well, especially with a lot of inexperience in the offensive line. Graziani. Waiting, 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 throwing. Almost intercepted for a touchdown. Wow. Breaking on that was Sam Peoples. And if Peoples had been in camp all fall, that might have yeah. been an interception. Well, had he been able to secure the football, there were no cheerleaders between him and the goal line. <laughs> and that was six points. <laughs> Sam Peoples, uh, they really like their three corners with Austin, Gentry, and Peoples. They all have experience. They've all started at one time or another. Very solid area for Portland State. I'll tell you, when you throw the ball the wide side of the field like that, he threw it late, and uh, you don't want to have to experience that too many times to learn it. Jailbreak. Graziani should have thrown it away. That's inexperienced there. Jeff Bockert got the sack from the inside linebacker spot. So Grani Graziani getting his taste under fire. And good for Oregon in that they're going to win this game, and he can take a few lumps and learn in the process but it has not been uh, Tony's dream day but it's a great learning experience so Belden in to attempt 
another field goal. Oh. This one will be spotted at the 27. Well, see, O'Neal won't even let Graziani have his hat. He's wearing both of them there. <laughs> so it looks like, uh, you know, uh, Sherlock Holmes there. <laughs> That's right. Totally. All he needs is the pipe and the magnifying glass. <laughs> if you don't hit 50%, you don't get your hat. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it gives O'Neal the Elmer Fudd look, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oregon with a timeout, a little indecisive in alignment on the field goal attempt. 13.08 remaining in the ball game. Let's update some of Danny O'Neal's career statistics. These are through today's game. And O'Neal closing in on Chris Miller for number two on the all-time Oregon list. And he's got a chance, if he has the kind of a season he had a year ago, particularly with 12 regular season games, to surpass Bill Musgrave's total of 83-43. There are, there are literally no passing records that are, uh, you know, outside of his reach this year. Yeah. You say, well, he's touchdown, total touchdowns, yeah. uh, total yardage, total passing yardage. He's only 3,000 yards behind. That's a, that's a and with an extra regular season game. Yeah. I mean, he threw for over 3,000 last year. <laughs> <laughs> he won't let, won't give him his hat back. <laughs> So Belden to attempt a 37-yard field goal. Ryan Perry Smith, the holder. Perry Smith, by the way, is the third quarterback on the Oregon roster. Perry Smith holding. The Ducks recruited a couple of uh, freshmen that they hope to redshirt this year. Jason Moss from Arizona and Mike Phelps from California. Belden's got the leg, but this one drifted no wide right. That's the first miss on a kick today for Belden. You know, the big adjustment, of course, for Matt Belden is learning to kick off the turf or grass without use of a tee. And that was a big adjustment the first week of fall camp. So Kyle, Kyle Allen remains in at quarterback for Portland State. And now they'll run that counter play. Derek Holmes slips and slides and Gets about 10 yards. Boy, he had a gaping hole there. That's the first time the Vikings have actually handed the ball off on that play. They've faked that a couple of times. So it's a first down for the Vikings. They have most of their first teamers still in the ball game at the skilled positions, except for James Hunden. He is out of the ball game. Notice Matt James not in there, too, right now. Hawley encroached in the wide receivers. Allen, the out pattern. Holmes, he has about six yards. Defensively for Oregon, a lot of the second liners in there right now. And a chance for some of these guys to get playing time. They haven't played a whole lot. Notice that uh, Rich Rule stays in there in the middle to kind of solidify things, but around him, a host of new players. Notice Derek Allen from Vancouver, Washington, one outside linebacker position. D.J. Cabrera in there. Jeff Branson in the middle, one of the linebackers from University High School in Spokane. There's Steve Pappen, and he gets a first down to the 42-yard line. That was Branson who made the tackle, but not before the first down. Gain of seven. In the secondary, once again, a lot of young, young people in there, some of which have experience because of the injuries last year. Isaac Walker at a corner, Lamont Woods at a corner, Brian Collins at a safety along with Dante Lewis. Oregon secondary very deep this year. 11 lettermen in that secondary. They have about six, seven guys, seven or eight guys that have started games. Uh, that's right. Even, even when they get down to their third unit, they've got guys who have played yeah. in, in critical situations over the years. So timeout for Portland State. Kyle Allen comes over to talk to coach Tim Walsh. Well, the rain held off this afternoon. We had some this morning, and at times it was rather hard, but right now, not bad at all. Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 42-yard line. Officials waiting for everybody to get all set and ready to go, and here we are. Allen has gone most of the way for the Vikings today. 
Out pattern. Steve Pappen has it. And he's corralled by Jeff Branson after a gain of four. Well, can you look at this game and uh, now with the outcome pretty much decided? Oregon with its second team defense in there right now. If you're Portland State, what do you take out of this game that you can use to build for next week when you travel once again, this time to Angelo State? Two things killed them. One is that uh, touchdown they gave up, punt return, set it up uh, right before half, and then all the penalties. Other than that, Portland State has played quite well, and the game could have been a lot closer. Not sure they have the manpower to, to win the game, but... You know, they're competing right now. They're competing well against Oregon. No one's... Uh, you know, flicking it in and hauling into the barn. And there's some good football players out there. As I say, the, the most glaring thing to me in the second half is the lack of discipline on defense. And that just seems to be kind of an emotional thing, not necessarily a lack of talent. Gitsum took a big hit there from Brian Collins. Uh, update you on some of the players that left because of injury. Steve Harden, sore knee. Uh, Shouldn't be a big deal. He'll be ready to go next week. Larry Austin from Portland State sprained a left toe. He's out for the rest of this game. And as a cornerback, you better get that puppy, in, you know, healed in a hurry. Oh, all alone is Derek Holmes, and he has got all kind of room to run. Getting a shield block by Holly and Lamont Woods finally bumped him out of bounds. Broken coverage, obviously, there by the Oregon defense. As Portland State with a big, big gain inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Well, the Ducks had five defensive backs in there, and I think in the Falcon package... The guy who plays Falcon has got to be aware of that uh, receiver coming outside. And there were a couple defensive backs lost in the middle here. You see a rush. The blitz is on. And there is nobody there to cover that inside uh, receiver. Pretty good job by Lamont Woods of coming off of coverage and knocking him out of bounds. But definitely a mix-up in coverage inside. First and 10 for the Vikings at the 17. Counterplay to Derek Holmes. This time manages only one. Mark Schmidt at the bottom of the stack for Oregon, number 54. Back to some of those injuries. Uh, Vernon Mitchell, left thumb sprain. Hope that he'll be back next week. And Ken Harrison uh, suffered a mild concussion. I assume that was on the, not the interception. The second hit. <laughs> it was on the second hit. Not the cheerleader. Yeah. So it does not look at this point like anybody has been seriously injured. Well, we'll That's always a concern in game game one as well. Very true. Well, remember last year, Herman O'Berry goes down in the first quarter. How that changed the Oregon secondary look. Heat by Cabrera. Dump pass. And it's caught in a nice reception by Pappen. Fumbled, and I think that officially will go as a fumble. And a gain of two yards by Portland State. Well, for Oregon coaches, uh, one of the nice things about this game is there have been a variety of different situations. And now here they are in their own red zone with the defense. You know, it's nice to have to defend, uh, try out your, uh, your red zone defenses without the fact that if they do score here, it's not going to be critical to the outcome of the game. Matt Lafrano, another red shirt freshman, outside linebacker making the tackle. Third down and 10 for the Vikings at the 14. Looking for the quick slant, nothing there. Pass is almost intercepted by Lamont Woods, guarding Kyle Croston. Good heat. Mark Schmidt again, along with Reggie Jordan. Well, Schmidt, they like him, and he has had a back injury in fall camp. Had a chance maybe to be a starter, but that back injury put him back a little bit. And they expect good things from him. Nice pressure on the outside. Desmond Bird as well, up the middle, number 99. That's what you need. Usually it takes two people to have pressure. You know, one person's got to force that quarterback to move somewhere where he doesn't want at a time maybe the nose guard's beating his man. Fourth down for Portland State. No field goal attempt here. Allen with time, lots it in the corner of the end zone. Intercepted by Brian Collins at the end zone. And he's got a chance here to make some yards, and he does all the way out to the 25-yard line. Brian Collins with his first career interception. So the interception, and the Ducks get another turnover. 
What, uh, plus two today, Ken? Yes. Fumble recovery and the interception? Two interceptions. Two interceptions. Well, and, and they've given up one, so they are plus two in the turnovers. Nice job getting up there and getting the ball. I think originally he was going to down the ball in the end zone, but then he saw that he had some room to go. Ryan Perry Smith now in a quarterback. And uh, Marcel Stewart getting back to the line of scrimmage, maybe one yard. Travis Beard made the tackle for Portland State. Ryan Perry Smith has uh, waited his turn and has improved in the last two springs to give himself an opportunity to, to play. He's been the holder. So he has gotten game action. It's been a long time since we've seen a third team quarterback in by you know, design. In yeah, in a situation where the first two were not laid up in the hospital. Yeah, that's a good point, Ken. Ryan from Granite Bay, California. And now he'll decide to take a timeout. Kyle Strait, the young redshirt freshman from Ashland in there at center now. Marcel Stewart to the outside, to the 30-yard line, and that's about it. And while the Vikings haven't lost their intensity level, you see Jeff Bockert still out there. And Jason Heffley and so forth. They're still playing hard, but it, uh, right now it's tough when you're at the short end of a 45-16 game to continue to play with the same emotion. That's right. Well, uh, you know, spring football, uh, for a lot of the Portland State, you know, the people they depend on, they weren't there. And right. it's, uh, it's going to take them a little while. And I think, you know, although this game may end up being a, a somewhat of a shellacking, it's going to be a real good building experience for the coaches there. They get ready for a tough season of their own. Here's Stewart again. Eric Reese, the safety right at the line of scrimmage in a gain of maybe two. So it'll be third down. And now Oregon working on the running game, the clock approaching the eight-minute mark. So it'll be fourth down. And here come the special teams back on. And again, when you look at the special teams for Oregon, a lot of those guys on the, the first unit defense Get back in there. You see Chad Cote is back in there. Derek Barnes, one of their pass rushers. So they're taking the special teams very important this year. Matt James, the lone safety for Portland State because of the injury to Hunden. And we have a whistle. And there was Belden getting it away. Pretty good kick, but they'll call it back. If you're Oregon, Ken, how do you uh, look at what happened here today? You have to be pleased with your quarterback and your wide receivers, I would think. Well, the people you knew were good were good today. You know, all the established stars. I would say that uh, uh, we've got to get that uh, running game a little bit coordinated. I think uh, the offensive line, again, I, I think they've got talent there. Everyone talks about inexperience. Uh, one game less experience now. I think the defense looks like they've got some big play capability up front. You know, they're going to be tested as they go along. A lot of interesting situations they've been able to go through today. You know, goal line offense, goal line defense, some kicking game situations. Oh, uh, Belden. Now, that's the one that Coach Brooks says makes him feel good. That's a boomer. That's, and, and you know, the thing about Belden, he is, as you mentioned, a two-step kicker. Several times we saw Tommy Thompson uh, avoid block kicks. You know, you talk to the coaches, they say, hey, sometimes he'd take an extra step in there. I think it's going to be a while before, you know, he gets that, that tip of the ball to turn over and so on. But he's definitely got the leg. And with the kind of coaching attention he's going to get the next couple of weeks, I think uh, the, what was a concern preseason with a kicking game will turn out to be uh, a strength for the Ducks. 48-yard punt, no return for Belden. Steve Pappen tries the left side, breaks one tackle. Jeff Branson holding on for dear life, gain of about four. You know, how about Oregon defensively, Ken? They, uh, they uh, played pretty well for most of the game. Uh, Portland State really didn't mount uh, anything at all of a running game this afternoon. They were forced to throw the ball early. Your evaluation? Well, I think... The key is that if they can force people to throw the football against them this year, you know, that, that is their strength. I think they got some pass rushers in there. It's got some pass rushing ability. But, you know, the, being able to stand up against the run, uh, that, I think that's going to end up being a real critical factor. And they've been very good at that today. Little out pattern. I mean, we've belabored this uh, at times, but just 
everything surrounding the rush is important to Oregon. Their ability to run the football effectively. Uh, maybe they're not going to be a 200-yard a game rushing offense, but they need to be able to run, take pressure off their quarterback, and you know, and do what they have to do. Uh, defensively, last year I think they fell off in the rushing game. I think the coaches felt a little bit of it was intensity. Uh, we're seeing pretty good intensity today. Well, Nick Galliotti, the defensive coordinator, says, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to play unbelievably hard and aggressively. That pass is dropped, incomplete. Former Oregon football player Steve Ward, the intended receiver. Ward started his collegiate career here and then uh, transferred out and eventually ended up at Portland State, young man from Dallas, Oregon. Well, tell us about the new nickname of the uh, Oregon defense. Well, Nick Galliotti says... Uh, going to call it Gang Green. Gang Green. And, and the reason he's going to call it Gang Green is because it, it doesn't look very good, but it's awful dangerous and it can kill you. Well, as we mentioned earlier, that was written under Todd McKim's picture in his high school annual. <laughs> Gang Green. No, that's a, I think that's a great description. And should Nick ever get out of coaching, I think he'd make a good sports information director. If you get in marketing. Uh, he's a real salesman. Here comes the counter option play here, Kai Island. There's Kenny Wheaton. Remember Kenny Wheaton on offense? Kenny Wheaton scored a touchdown. Now Kenny Wheaton has made a tackle defensively. <laughs> I was wondering if Nick would be able to get him away from offense and get him a couple uh, repetitions on defense. Well, that's a marvelous testimony to a freshman. You know, you're playing both ways. Yeah, as I say, Nick is a great salesman, and... Uh, uh, you know, the extent of Oregon's defense this year may be how much of a sales job he does on them that, hey, guys, we can do this. So number 41 there, Curtis Moore, an inside linebacker. Just another young one thrown into the fray. Allen to throw, has some time. The out pattern to Holmes and good coverage by Kenny Wheaton. I guess this guy's a pretty good football player. He has a multitude of talents. Well, I, I love the fact that they're letting them play both yeah. ways. Um, you know, it's... Uh, Dino Filioff played both ways. Uh, I think it was last year in a game, had eight snaps. Can't remember who it was against. Might have been... I don't think it was Stanford. Anyway, Filioff went both ways in one game, but it is very, very rare nowadays. Chad Cota flying in there, trying to block that one. Herman O'Berry picks it up at the 22. Bit of a seam. Breaks one tackle, breaks another. I tell you what, this guy's going to be pretty exciting. He had maybe the play of the day this afternoon with that one-handed interception in the third quarter. And as you can see, as a punt returner, he could be a big impact player. Well, it's unfortunate the return is going to come back. There's a penalty on, uh, you're not going to see it in this uh, particular picture, but here's an example of an aggressive punt returner. Could have just let the ball die, picks it up. He's got some moves left, folks. But what you did not see, uh, I, I think it was Dino Filia and one of the other players, number 28, Chad Williams were trying to block the outside contain man for Portland State, and they were pushing each other after the play, and it happened right in front of the official. And it's really one of the it's the first discipline penalty we've seen this afternoon for the Ducks. And I guess those are inevitable in a game that you know tends to get a little bit sloppy at the end. 45-16, Oregon, 4:40 to play in the game. Ryan Perry Smith continues as the quarterback. And we are seeing a lot of fresh people here. Damon Griffin in a one wide receiver position. That's Stewart in motion. Brian Perry Smith, thunder thrown, intended for Stewart. But you talk about uh, game situations of which you can teach from. That last punt return is an example where uh, Rich is going to show that back and forth to the punt return team and say, hey, we lost our poise down here on the 30 yard line. 40 yards away from the football and it costs us 20 yards of field possession field position better now in a runaway against the non-conference team than down the road in a game where that play is going to cost you the game you can make a, a good coaching point and i know he will oh yes he doesn't miss things like that here's the drop play marcel stewart trying to bounce outside nothing doing there 
Good tackle for the Vikings by Mike Hariel, linebacker number 43. Not much left to be decided here except the final score. And at this point in this kind of a game, you just hope that uh, everybody stays healthy so that both teams can go their separate ways from here. Portland State can get into its serious Division II schedule, try to make a run for its seventh postseason appearance in eight games. And the Ducks, of course, heading over to Hawaii, which is always a tough place to win. Screen pass to Stewart. And there's Kareel again. Boy, he put a lick on Stewart. Stewart. 10 carries 44 yards this afternoon. He's got a lot and a lot of playing time of all the plays the Ducks have thrown against uh, Portland State that particular play has been defended the best they have been right there and uh, the outside contained people have refused to be fooled. And so another punt for Matt Belden his last punt a 48 yarder his best of the afternoon. Belden with five punts so far this afternoon. Look out. Yep, this one's blocked. And that one just took too much time. And making that block, I believe, was Sam Peoples. Well, one of the problems on the right side of the rush, two men came off the corner. Jeff Sherman bumped one of them. But you're going to see the pressure come from the right side of your screen. Yeah, that was a lack of blocking, not slowness on Belden's part, I believe. Yeah, so Sam Peoples gets credit for the block, and Portland State with a chance maybe to put another score on the board here. In a quarterback for Portland State, Josh Racanelli. He saw a little bit of action in the first half. Dump pass over the middle, in and out of the hands of Steve Pappen, and almost intercepted by Jeff Branson. Well, special teams, Ken. In the last year, we saw this... Uh, on several occasions, the, the Ducks yeah. not holding up, protecting their punter. Well, you can see, uh, and actually that's probably an area coming out of this game that I would say be, might be the biggest concern for Coach Brooks. Their, their kickoff coverage has been soft, particularly on the left side. They've given up a couple of returns. Uh, I, you know, the punter w needs more repetitions, but there's just a, a protection breakdown by veteran players, and that's got to bother you a little bit. Reggie Jordan from the blind side. That's a fumble recovered by Portland State, I believe. Reggie Jordan with a fierce rush from the outside. And he's known as a guy that can hold up against the run. They wanted to see if he could rush the passer, and boy, did he ever. Well, you watch this hit. Not only does he separate him from the football, but this is a fizz. Ooh. Reminds me of Ernest Jones. Yeah. And we, we all can remember how he could ignite a defense and uh, strike terror in the hearts of a quarterback. And, you know, that's a big one of the concerns up front is can we get that fourth pass rusher? Mm -hmm. And they feel he's got to be the guy. Look pretty good on that play. Okay, here comes Jordan again, and he's again got the sack. So Reggie Jordan with a big burst here. A couple of sacks. And that'll force Portland State to punt. So the Ducks defense, second teamers, and of course Jordan, the starter, bailing out the special teams. Yeah, that's takes a lot of pressure off of everybody. One thirty-six, thirty-five, the clock continues to roll. And there's a bad snap, and who knows what will happen here. Well, it's going to go as a big loss, and Chad Coda makes the tackle. That's got to be uh, about a 40-yard loss. Well, let's just guesstimate at that. 40 yards. Well, the ball ends up 68 yards from where it started. No, 58 yards from where it started after On the, the series. kick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen situations like that where the kicker should get the ball and just kick it out of the end zone and give up the safety. Surprised he didn't remember that. <laughs> I think he just wanted to get this one kind of over with. Well, he was so tired when he got to the center snap, he couldn't think. Now, 
Is that we, the we, longest center it, snap in Austin Stadium history? Well, that might be a record. Ball carrier there, Eric Wynn. Getting a carry for the Ducks. Uh, he played strong safety mm -hmm. in the spring game. Mm -hmm. Now the Ducks are a little thin in the backfield this year because of some injury. He's going to get it again. He's down inside the two-yard line, down to about the one. 44 seconds remaining. That's also close to a first down. Well, Boy, know, nothing that these second and third teamers would like more than to punch in a touchdown. That'd be great. And I know a couple of relatives of Eric who are uh, hoping that he gets the ball a third straight shot. Harvey Wynn and Dick Wynn, uh, former Oregon players. They told me at the spring game that uh, Eric Pound for Pound was the strongest guy in the Oregon team. Now the Vikings have come back with some of their first teamers now defensively. Here comes the toss sweep to Marcel Stewart. There's Hefley misses and Stewart scores. Marcel Stewart tacks on another touchdown with eight seconds remaining. Nice job by the fullback win right there to the left side. And that you got to feel real good for those kids in there. They probably don't get a chance to play a lot. Credit the defense, couple of sacks and a bad snap, they get a chance to put it in the end zone. So Belden in to attempt the extra point. Your heart goes out to some of those guys from Portland State that have played so hard, just a, a little overmatched today, and they give up another score. Belden's extra point is good. It was Johansson. Oh, Johansson kicked the extra point. Yeah. I'm sorry. Thanks for correcting me. So Eric Johansson, who a week ago at this time was uh, lying on the carpet with what he thought was a broken collarbone, made a very quick recovery, wasn't broken. X-rays negative, so he gets a chance, the young man from Medford. And he gets a point, gets himself into the Oregon book. You watch Take a look at the touchdown. Watch the blocking on the right side of your screen here. The fullback kicks his man out. Stewart hits it up inside. Pretty good job of blocking by those young pups. Marcel Stewart's done some good things for Oregon today in the running back position. See there, the uh, pitch wasn't the, the best, but boy, put the head down. You like to see your tailback going north and south, not east and west, and that's what he did. But you know, here in Eugene, north and south is east that's to west. That's right, okay. So, <laughs> well, everyone's going looking at the shadows saying, wait a second, north and south, he should have run right up. Uh, <laughs> happy to see Johansson get a chance to kick. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's been around the program a long time, and to get a chance to get your name in the book, especially coming back from a collarbone. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Derek Holmes. <laughs> well, at this point, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. The 52 points today by Oregon is the most points the Ducks have scored since October 6th of 1990 when they beat Utah State 52-7. to So maybe time for one more running play, maybe two more pass plays. And uh, time for the folks in attendance here. Crowd of 30,500 for the season opener on Labor Day, 1994. Time for high school kids, grade school kids, to head back to school this next week. And, of course, Oregon won't start school until later this month in the, the academic area of things. Here's the running play, and this will be it. Unless he goes out of bounds. Steve Pappen runs out of bounds. It's a gain of uh, 12 yards on the play, and two seconds remain. I take that back on that uh, most points by the Ducks. That was uh, 1992, 59 to 6, UNLV. I slipped by that in my perusal of the record book. I think both coaches glad to get this one out of the way, Ken. You know, oh, yeah. the first game is always. It's, it's a tormenting game in, in preparation. You just have no idea what to expect from a lot of your people and schemes and so forth. Well, injuries have been so critical to Oregon over the past couple years. You Here's know. a touchdown, Brian Collins. 
Touchdown on the fumble on the final play of the game. Botched handoff. Mad scramble, and there's Brian Collins. Collins with an interception today and a fumble recovery for a touchdown. And that's the final play from scrimmage. I don't know if we're going to have a PAT or not. Here it is again. You see the scramble. Good job by Derek Allen to get rid of the ball carrier. Derek Holmes can't catch Brian Collins, who will hear about that as he romps in for the touchdown. And this one's in the books. Rich Brooks says, uh, or the officials say, no extra point. Let's uh, end it. Good idea. 58-16, the final score. So Rich Brooks now the winningest coach in Oregon football history. Moving ahead of Len Casanova, he and Tim Walsh converge at midfield, each wishing the best for the future. A big day for number 16, Oregon senior quarterback Danny O'Neill. Four touchdown passes as the Oregon Ducks route the Portland State Vikings 58-16. Well, can you look at today's game? And Oregon took control in the first quarter, scoring on three straight possessions. Danny O'Neill was sharp today. He didn't have the biggest numbers in the world. He didn't have to, but he got the team in the end zone. And the Ducks did a lot of good things, enough good things that they have to feel good about themselves. And then there were enough things that the, you know, the coaches can criticize in a victory uh, situation. Well, I think there's a lot of good things there and uh, a lot of things that they had to work on to be a good team. You see the statistics clearly uh, in the favor of the Ducks. Uh, rushing yardage of uh, uh, Portland State, uh, th that's significant. Uh, you know, the thing is, I think Portland State's got a pretty good football team. Yeah. It's going to take them a game or two to get their, uh, uh, all their pistons running together. Oregon, they've got work to do, but right now I'd say they're in pretty good position. Yeah, they definitely w did a lot of the things they wanted to today. Third down conversions, pretty good. Uh, first downs, 24. And the big turnover, you know, the five turnovers by Portland State, a couple of them uh, directly leading two scores, and one was a score on Brian Collins's fumble recovery to end the ball game. And the turnovers coming as a result of pressure. So that's one thing they were unable to do last year. Uh, this is a new year.